Heisman Trophy winner Jason White leads the second-ranked Oklahoma Sooners against the number one passing attack of the nation, the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. The Sooners' road towards a national title gets a serious test today from Tech quarterback Sonny Cumbie and a Red Raider offense that is lit up defensive secondaries. The home team Sooners have balance on both sides of the ball, led by Jason White, a strong candidate for back-to-back -back Heismans. Texas Tech goes storming into Norman to battle the number two team in the nation, the Oklahoma Sooners. It's up next on FSN. the first career start for running back Adrian Peterson of the Sooners. Jason White, the Heisman winner, well, he's ahead of last year's pace. While Sonny Cumbie is the nation's leading passer, and Torian Henderson is the Big 12's Offensive Player of the Week. Kia Serra presents Big 12 football as today. The Texas Tech Red Raiders take on the number two team of the nation, the Oklahoma Sooners. Hi, everybody. I'm Joel Myers, alongside Dave Lapmel. Welcome to Norman. Well, last year he was the top high school running back in the nation. And now Adrian Peterson can say that he is the very first true freshman to ever start his career with three 100-yard games. The Sooners have a game-breaker, Joel. 6'2", 210 pounds, and a very, very gifted runner. Look at the quick feet, the great feet in the hole. Look at the vision, anticipating the cut and when to make that cut. Very, very gifted. And then, so he can make you miss in space, make you look silly in space. And then he can also lower his shoulder pads and run through your, run you over, finish for touchdowns. This guy has got it all. And he's complimented, of course, by the Heisman Trophy winner last season, Davey O'Brien winner, Jason White. I mean, there are some of those career numbers. Very efficient this season. He's averaging, averaging over 9.4 yards per pass attempt, completing 72% of his passes, six touchdowns, one interception, tremendously efficient. Tech quarterback Sonny Cumbie has engineered over the last two games the largest comebacks in school history. One was at home, one was on the road, but it wasn't against the number two team of the nation. They simply can't afford to fall behind early. No, you can't spot Oklahoma anything. They're 33 and one here at home under Bob Stoops. But Cumbie has really got an understanding of what to do in this spread offense. You see he leads the Big 12 over Jason White passing by a large margin. He has thrown the ball to six different receivers 14 times or more. That is understanding that you're attacking the whole field in this spread offense, understanding what they're doing scheme-wise and breaking it down and attacking those areas of the field. cumbie has got to figure it figured out. So we get ready for what has the potential to be one of the most explosive offensive shows we will see all year long. Now, will it materialize? When we come back, we're going to join the guys in the studio. Mike Goldberg, Kevin Winslow, Billy Ray Smith in our College Football Saturday studio. You're watching Big 12 Football presented by Gear Zero on FSN as we return to Norman, Oklahoma. But let me tell you this. One thing you got to know if this Sooner Schooner is on the field today, Texas Tech will not like that because that means Texas Tech will be scoring points. The main thing is, will the Sooner Schooner be on the sidelines well rested or will they be getting a workout? We will see, Joel. Well, nice, he came equipped. I didn't know why he brought a wheelbarrow and a shovel <laughs> to the game today, but now I know. Oh, he's getting shaken up like a milkshake in that Sooner Schooner. <laughs> Now, when I said we've got classic football oh. weather, it's 54. It's, our, it's getting warmer, though. It'll be in the 60s most of the game. And, Dave, we were down in the field earlier. The sun is burning brightly. It is so comfortable for football today. It is ideal. Perfect weather for the game of football. Big 12 action on FSN. You can't beat it. Mark Clayton he is going to be back as Texas Tech, believe it or not, and Keith Toogood will kick it away. Texas Tech won the toss. Obviously, they love playing catch up because they deferred to the second half. They deferred, and in, in, in the third quarter is where they make their hay. They've only given up three points the entire season in the third quarter. So I guess uh, that was part of their thinking. So the senior Bradley down the middle weights. Too good. Came to a slight breeze, and from the two, 
Bradley on the return, looking for a lane, blocking the back. Would they throw a flag? No, it didn't make any difference. Oh, and boy, Oklahoma got away with one at the 22-yard line. Is there a starting 11 for the Oklahoma Sooners? Well, I mentioned he's ahead of last year's pace. He's already hit 72 percent of his passes this year. He is seventh in the nation in passing efficiency as he's got six touchdowns, only one interception. And as Bob Stoops told us earlier this week, he said, don't forget, he's two years removed from back to back ACL. So Jason White now is a great athlete again. And, and, and when you look at his legs, no knee braces. So he's got his legs back underneath them, and he, it's all the difference in the world. Peterson, the single to the backfield. They slide Runnels on first down. Peterson, the cutback. Man, he's got about five up to the 28. The experience on the offensive line is Nitschman made the stop. West Sands, the left tackle, three years as a starter. He's got Bush, Carter, first team all Big 12 last year, Joseph, and Jamal Brown. And the backfield, as we mentioned, first career start for the super freshman Peterson. Bubba Moses had a touchdown a couple of games ago. Clayton, Jones, and Wilson are the wide receivers. So the ground game of Oklahoma. Early and often, we'll find out. On second down, it's Peterson again. And boy, great penetration. The stop in the backfield. It's a loss. Hudler got underneath the sophomore from Mesquite, Texas. We'll take a look with Dawson over there as well. Yeah, what a stop on Peterson. 60 seconds in. Is Sarah starting 11 defensively now for the Red Raiders of Texas Tech coming in at 3-1. Nitschman, Hudler, Bank had a sack last week, and Adel Duckett, the big sack master last year. Salvi, Stratton, and Smith. Smith, their leading tackler with Huffman, and Nazar Dean on the corners with Johnson and Meeks at the safeties. It's going to be third and long, White's first throw of the game. Going in the deep out, and it's out of bounds. Taken in out of bounds on the far side. Trying to hook up with Travis Wilson. So three and out, and Mike Leach knew what he was doing when he said, we'll defer. Well, I tell you, this Texas Tech defense is getting better and better. A big key to their comeback win last week against Kansas, they pitched a shutout in the second half and allowed Texas Tech to score 26 points in the game. Amendola. Help bring him back against TCU. He is a great threat on punts. He's not as explosive on kickoffs yet. The kid who's got a 13-yard average on punt returns, and that is a beauty from Blake Ferguson. Amendola wrapped up by Bradley. Bradley got down in a hurry back at the 18-yard line. And Texas Tech, with no return from Amendola, is going to have a deep of their own territory for the first time this afternoon. He is there as starting offensive lineup for the Red Raiders. And don't forget for Cumbie, these guys have been on the road, it seems like, for weeks. Right. He is the number one passer in the nation. 429 yards a game. He's got to avoid the mistakes, though, especially in this territory, because he had four picks last week. Yeah, you, you can't spot Oklahoma 21, 25 points like uh, Texas Tech has done the last two weeks against TCU and Kansas. There's no way. You can't even spot him seven. He'll start out of the gun. What a shot with trips over to the far side. It'll be Torian Henderson. Not much. In fact, doesn't get back to the line. Great play. Coming up on the end, it was Jonathan Jackson, the senior from Houston, a third team All Big 12 last year. Offensive line. Lobers got the experience at left tackle with Campbell, Gandy, Ramirez, and Whitley. Know this bunch pretty well over the last three weeks, don't we? Right. Henderson to the back to the H back at Clay McGuire. Hicks, the leading receiver of the nation, 160 yards a game. Trey Haverty coming off his best game of his career last week. They've got a lot of things going for them offensively, but now deep in their own territory, it's a second and 12. Pocket holds up well. Time and close to the first down. The grab made right at the marker. Didn't get a good spot. Pull on the coverage of Hicks. Hicks, 160 yards a game, number one in the nation. Yeah, phenomenal season. And, and, and he's catching almost over eight passes a game as well. Now the Sooner defensive group, and they've put some new ones in there. Jackson Pendleton, Magruder, and Dan Cody. Dan Cody will show up all day long. Consensus all Big 12 last year. Mitchell back from an injury. The man in the middle, Alexander, and Ingram playing him among the three linebackers. Experience in the secondary. Perkins on the corner. Bassey over to one side with Nicholson and Rodney Poole are the safeties. Didn't think they got a great spot. I thought he caught it around the 29. They put it outside of the 28. Will it make a difference? No. First down, Texas Tech. Well, on that play, Oklahoma only rushed three and dropped eight into coverage. 
And Cumbie still find, found a window to throw the football. And Bob Stoops uh, trying to make some adjustments here immediately. He is 33 and 1 at home since taking over here at Oklahoma. He has uh, Shelby, one of his defensive backs that was in the game. Obviously, Oklahoma is going to go more with the nickel and dime, five and six defensive backs, as everybody does, to combat this spread offense of Mike Leach. Shots out of their own 28 with a pocket hold up. Gumby's got all day. Now collapses, he dumps it off. That's a great read. He goes out to Hicks. What a maneuver for a first down, I believe. Jared Hicks going out of bounds where he needed to, and he may be about a half yard shy at the most. Well, Cumbie has got Jonathan Jackson in his face. 6'3, 250 pound defensive end who is the, the, the guy in terms of pressure in the quarterback, leads the team in quarterback pressures, and Cumby as he's going to the ground, just drops down a little bit and slings it out there sidearm, and Hicks makes the first guy miss, and generates uh, almost a first down, second and very short, a throw away down. Boy, Mitchell and Alexander slid right by Hicks on that play, the two linebackers, so second and less than a yard. Well, Cumby under center here. A rarity in their offense. The inside give as Henderson sees nothing's available inside. Outside, forget about it. He loses a half yard. Larry Burdeen, the sophomore from Lawton, Oklahoma, in on that stop. Playmaker, very, very quick. Texas Tech, what they want to do is execute early. So far, they have a three and out on the defensive end, and they're moving the ball here offensively. Capitalize on turnovers. If they get some turnovers, score points. They've only got 21 points off of 10 takeaways on the season. Have to do better than that. And hidden yards. Make Oklahoma go on the long field, get themselves some short fields. In order to upset a heavy favorite, you have to get the takeaways and, and win the field. Well, yards. Splits on that left side don't look as wide as we've seen them before. Henderson needs a half a yard. He'll get it up to the 40. First down, Texas Tech. And that's one of the characteristics of this offense, Dave. We've been talking about over the last couple of weeks. They, they tease you. They taunt you with their wide splits on the offensive line as there's a flag on the play. Sideline warning on Oklahoma. First warning. Good. Double secret probation. That's right. And, and really, Texas Tech, when they do run the football, will play action. They, they will close those splits up. And the splits that you see between the, the guard and tackle is incredible. Two, almost three yards. Look at these splits. And what this does, a guy like Cody and, and people like him, they're, they're 15 to 18 yards from the quarterback rather than their normal. Look at how far away from the quarterback he is in the move. Cubby after the play fake. Goes to the man he faked it to. And it's complete for a first down to Glover. Or make it a second and long. He didn't get much. He's right at the original marker. It is interesting, though. This is what Cumbie in this offense means. They need to clock the move. They need to have a real patient offensive look today. Too often, they score in two or three minutes. Right. And, and, and they both, need to play key boy. Both of these coaches understand each other. Bob Stoops said when he was talking to his defense this week, he looked over his notes that he had as a defensive coordinator of Florida when, when Leach was coordinator offensively at Kentucky for Hal Mummy. He said the same checklist, the same keys he was going over him this Two week with his players. 12. On the offense. Penalty is five yards, and it's still second down. They little deception. Out. Yeah, they had 12 out there. Yeah, but little, who's counting? You can't, yeah, it's not Canada. You know, <laughs> here we're, we're in the United States, so it's only 11 in the huddle, not 12. You can't deceive the offense, or the defense, by having 12 men in the offensive huddle. But as you can see, Dave, they're used to working in these situations. Well, they've uh, been penalized more than 11 times a game for a little under 93 yards a game. That's uh, too much self-destruction. Can't have that today. They keep the eighth back in there, Clay McGuire. And he joins Henderson in the backfield. Cumbie up at the play fake. Thought about going out of the edge. Goes a hold. He throws it away. Yeah. yeah, it was an easy Ola call Mua. to make, yes. Ola Mua just grabbed, and, uh, you know, he, he, he was beaten. Jonathan Jackson out there. Yep, and Ola Mula said, I'm not going to let Cumbie get crushed. I'm going to have to grab and hold, and he just absolutely just grabbed into Jackson's uh, jersey from behind. And that's a tough matchup. You know, tight end now, he's a big kid, but he's not a pass blocker. And, and he went against one of their better pass rushers and got beaten. Holding by the offense. Penalties refused. It's third down. And we talked about Olamua. He hasn't played football since 99. He's a transfer. Right. Then he went on a religious mission for a couple of years and then had to sit out a year after the transfer. So he was at BYU, went on a mission to Hawaii. And, uh, he got caught with his hand not only in the cookie jar, in the bottom of the cookie jar there. It was all around. 
So five minutes into the ball game. Tess got a couple of first downs. And now they're looking at third and long after the penalty is declined. It's interesting. Look at how far, look how far away. Look how not far, that bad. Look at how far away Jackson is from the quarterback joint on the rush. Middle screen doesn't work. Glover, they read it perfectly. Brodney Bull, the free safety came over. And they're ready. They're going to, they knew they'd see shovels when we talked to Coach Stoops and screens. Well, they, they, they think the number one key to slowing down Texas Tech is stopping Torian Henderson. The closer to come to you are as a skill player, the more you touch the football. So a running back that's close by to him in the backfield gets more balls, and then the slot receivers get more, and as you go to the perimeter, they get fewer. The senior from Lawton, Oklahoma, Antonio Perkins, who is tied for the NCAA record. Baz Reyes just got it away. Will they be able to get number nine? Looking for a block to the 25, not this time. And zigzagging his way, he doesn't get much. Only the 22 yard lines he gave up ground. So Oklahoma deep in their own territory once again when we come back. The Sooners, the national champions in 2000, and currently the number two team in the nation. Jason White winning the Heisman last year, trying for back-to-backs as a little dump off. And out in the flank, take it in as Runnels, the fullback has it. Short game to the 25. Gain of about three. Session over there on the stop. Well, Jason White, and I mentioned six TDs and only one interception, 72%. This for a guy that hit 62% all of last season. Through for 3,900 yards, so you can see how well he's done already. Efficiency has been the key. Plus, he hasn't played in the second half for a couple of games. They've been up by so much. And the key to his efficiency is his health. Runnels again. Fletcher session, meeting him at the pass again. And he's knocked out of bounds short of the first down at about the 30. Noxy? All right, a little bit more about Jason White. You may recall last year, limited because he wore a couple of knee braces, had reconstructive knee surgery. Well, this year, no more knee brace. That's right, play knee brace free. The mobility is back, and that is a big plus for the Sooners, guys. Uh, no question about it, Noxie. And because he's got his legs back under him, you'll see him 50% of the time under center. Last year, they had to play him in the shotgun. He couldn't push away from the center. Here he's under center again. And that helps the running game. You get the running game going, you can play action pass. Couldn't do any of that last year. He was so limited physically. They need two trying to get the kick. Oh, and they got a big one for the wide receiver. There goes Peterson down the sideline. Will anybody catch it? The super freshman taking that inside the 10 all the way to the nine yard line. What a block by the wide receiver. Well, Chad Johnson got completed. I mean, depleted on that play, and, and that's just a tremendous crackback block, and you have to hit him above the waist, and you can't hit him in the back. And uh, Chad Johnson, somebody's got to call this out for him because he just got blindsided. And, and there you saw Chad Johnson, Johnson go off his feet. Peterson makes a diving player miss. Somebody tries to take him up high. Another missed tackle. But it all started with the tremendous crackback block. Take another look on the edge here. There's the, there's the block. There's the kick out by Runnels. Missed tackle. Missed tackle. You can't tackle him him up high, and that's exactly what Vincent Meeks tried to do. Can't Six, tackle him with the pass. 61 yards on the carry, and Peterson is 6'2", a little over 200 pounds. And what his coaches told us earlier this week, he's a big back, but he's got very quick feet. Yeah. He can adjust on a dime. I mean, he really stops well and and makes the cuts. He's got uh, the ability to get in and out of holes so quickly. And at 6'2", 210 pounds, a rare, rare combination of size and power and speed. Well, Texas Tech wants to slow this one down. They've got a timeout, and so do we. It'll be second and goal Sooners after the 61-yard run by Peterson. We're off to the races in Norman. Inside the two. Talk about tough running. Drag meets. Drag. The free safety thought he had him at around the five, as you can see. But I mean, there's he talked about tough yards after contact. Meeks slides down, it slides down the body like a barber pole. I mean, it's like a barber pole. He's just sliding right down his body. 
you gotta you gotta hit him and wrap the thing you can't do with a guy like Peterson when you make contact you gotta keep your feet going you have to run through the running back you don't stop your feet and he'll drag you just like what happened to Meeks well 11 of 16 times they've come up with a touchdown will it be a touchdown this time Peterson won't be done how tough is that kid Jeez. I mean that that's uh that's one powerful young man. Josh Wrangle that time, no contest for Peterson. Safety Wrangle. Boom. Safety Wrangle gone. Peterson in the end zone. Breaks two tackles, goes in standing up. This is uh I can't imagine him in high school, because he's a man amongst boys here at the NCAA level. In high school it had to be ridiculous. De Carlo for the extra point. And a 7 0 lead early for the Suitors. We are halfway through the opening 15 minutes of play. It was all keyed by the 61 yard run, the great block by Mark Clayton, the wide receiver. And Oklahoma has an early advantage. Adrian Peterson's walking tall right now. Man. Don't forget he's only 18. So he's just, I mean, he's a growing young man. He doesn't know what he doesn't know yet. <laughs> he really doesn't. <laughs> Died scoring job. Six plays, 78 yards. Now, Johnny Mack, though, running waits with Danny Amendola. DiCarlo into the end zone it goes and Mack with no mo will stay right there in Tech. Yeah, and that Red River battle is such a deal because not only is it the Big 12 South, it's usually an opportunity for the Big 12 championship. And if you lose it, it knocks you out of the national championship, folks. All in one game. It's incredible. On first down, moving the pocket. Cumbie, great opportunity. Perfect strike. He's got a first down with Clay Fuller. Uh, Dante Nicholson. A strong safety. On the stop. Cody Fuller, of course, on that catch. And reading the coverage, finding a little nice little runs a great route, finds a little seam between safety and cornerback. Come be on the move, throws a perfect strike. His mechanics were outstanding. Squared those shoulder pads up to the line of scrimmage and threw a uh, ski right. And you can see from the numbers, they moved the ball on their first series. They yep. hurt themselves with a couple of penalties. Yep, that's been the story of their season. Quick slant, and the grab taken by Glover. He's got good yardage. That's like a running play. This it's good for about four, almost five. Pop from the free safety, Rodney Poole. And then that the thing that is incredible about the safeties, Joel Nicholson at strong safety, 6'2", 210. Rodney Poole, 6'3", 198 pounds. Massive. I mean, big-bodied safeties that can really run, and it gives you all that versatility. I mean, they're big enough to stop the run, and they can run and defend the pass. Cumbie on second and about six. Deep ball over the middle. Good fingertips of Fuller. And he had two in the area underneath. He had, it was either Aberdy, as Dante Nicholson was over, Perkins, but they brought a few defenders into the neighborhood. Yeah, and, and Oklahoma is deciding to pressure with only three and four people and drop seven and eight into coverage. That's their philosophy right now. And it's going to be tough. Those five Texas Tech offensive line will be able to pick up a three-man rush easily. A four-man rush they shouldn't have big problems with. And the company's having plenty of time to throw the football. They're going to shift Fuller and put trips up top to the wide side of the field. And now they get the playoff in time. On the quick count, they will. Cumbie and Heat off the outside, off the edge, gets to it. The sack is there. It was Antonio Perkins on the corner blitz. Saying they and they the say they did take it away from Cumby. And they got it. And and it comes up with it. The last thing the Tech needs, turnovers, and Oklahoma's got the first of the day. Both teams coming into the game, minus one in the turnover department. And this is, uh, this is an incredible effort. They bring people off the slot, and they get there. Get to the quarterback, not only get the quarterback, take the ball right out of his hands. That's just a, an outstanding, standing effort. Take the ball away. That's the double dip ice cream. Take that it was, away. That wasn't a strip. That was a steal. Yeah, it just, just absolutely took it right out of his possession. And now a short field for Oklahoma. Just what Texas Tech did not want to see happen. 
It's at the 34 of Tech first down. Sooners as Peterson stays in the backfield. White working out of the gun. Pocket holds up well. Deep ball. It's available. Touchdown Oklahoma. No, it's dropped by Clayton. Thought he had it on his way down. Meeks got there with Huffman and hung up a little bit, but he outjumped him anyway. He did, and he caught the ball at the apex of his jump, but just could not quite control it. Boy, that's a rarity when Clayton drops one. But you see the accuracy that Jason White throws that deep ball with. Boy, he just, he has got a, a very, very fine touch down the football field to the deep quadrants. Great protection, un unimpeded is Jason White. And he's got possession of that ball. That, that could have been called yes. a touchdown. I mean, he had possession. Did he get his foot down with possession? Looked like he did. But Meeks, uh, Meeks you know, got in there and got involved, and as did Huffman. Second and 10 for the 34. Blitz off the other edge. Peterson can't get out of the backfield. What a stop up front by Nitschman, the left and the sophomore from Corpus Christi. Texas Tech feels that one of the things that has to happen is the defensive tackles have to control the guards of Oklahoma. The defensive tackles have to win at the line of scrimmage. And if they don't win at the line of scrimmage, it's, it's a problem because if Oklahoma's interior people can control those inside running lanes and those inside pass rush lanes, it could be a long day. True freshman out of Lawton. D.J. Wolf into the game for the first time. So slide the tight end. Set up the screen, and Wolf can't hang on. Top though. That's a little dark. High and wide. And it's going to go fourth down. Mike Smith on the coverage. Now does Bob Stoops go for it here? It's an awfully long field goal attempt for DiCarlo. You don't want to punt here. You don't want to punt here. If he goes in the end zone, it's only a 16-yard differential in field position. Well, let's see what they do. They do bring out DiCarlo. He's going to set up for about a 53-yarder. I guess Bob feels fourth and 11 is just a little too much. A little too much to try to try to go for. Well, he's going to use timeout either way. And then they can talk about whether or not they want to go for it. So a timeout to avoid the five-yard markup. And now, after thinking about it, they're not going to try it. They took the penalty. Five-yard penalty, and Ferguson punted it away. Let's see if Ferguson can get it out of bounds. He's got his man down. He keeps it at the one-yard line for him. Great coverage by the wide receiver, Mark Bradley. Senior from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. He returns kicks, and he covers punts well. Back downstairs, Noxie. Hey, guys, some big developments down here on the sidelines. Adrian Peterson came out two plays ago. They're looking at his right arm right now. So as of night right now, Adrian Peterson on the bench. He has a gash in his right arm. It doesn't appear to be serious. We'll see what happens. All right, Jim. Well, they went from one true freshman, Peterson, to the next true freshman. Not a lot in Oklahoma. Eisenhower High School. Yep. That was D.J. Wolf. And this is just what Texas Tech didn't want to have happen. They wanted long fields for Oklahoma, short fields for themselves. Right now, Oklahoma dictating field position. Hidden yards, big in Oklahoma's favor. Hicks up top, isolated on the outside. Cumbie's got all day now. Pocket falls apart, and Johnny Mack had it thrown behind him and at his feet with Dan Cody in the face of the quarterback. And they brought four down linemen. This time, they've got Texas Tech backed up. They bring four down linemen in and drop seven into coverage. Well, what a break, though. What a job with the Texas Tech defense. With Oklahoma starting into the Tech 34, they don't get any points off the turnover. And, and a bit, Lyle Settencich's group is young defense with Texas Tech is getting better and better and better with every single football game. Now, Keewon Jones is a high ankle spray. They don't want to use it. Yeah, he, As you saw him on the sideline, he, leading the cheers. Emergency use only. Big toss on the outside, barely out of the end zone. That's Glover. Shelby over on the coverage. So as quick as they can be offensively, boy, the speed of the Oklahoma defense. And our first down line brought to you by Overstock.com, your online outlet. It's all about the O, Overstock.com. What a key third down coming up in this ball game with inside of five left in the first 15. And you just hit on the biggest thing with Oklahoma, Joel, speed. Offensively, defensively, special teams. Speed can cause panic, can cause a team to panic. And that's what Oklahoma does. They intimidate you with that speed, and they cause a lot of panic. 
Now they've got trips over to the near side. But their big man, Hicks, is isolated over on the far side, and that's where they're going. Uncovered first down. Boy, the defensive back on that side just left him as he's knocked out of bounds by Bassey. But Jared Hicks, you can't leave him that far huh. by himself. You certainly can't. A guy that's averaging 160 yards in receiving per game, leading the nation in over eight catches per game. And all he does is run a little deep out. And, and he's just absolutely forgotten about it. Gets on top of the corner. Bassey just for some reason he just yeah. bit, on, bit on the slant. He bit on the slant and absolutely just never recovered. Safety over the top can't get there in time. And Cumby did a good job. He didn't look at Hicks until he threw it there. Yep. From the 23, quick one to Glover. Got the kick out from Haverty. Boy, give the other wide receiver the credit on that one. No Up doubt. to the 34, a first down. And Haverty, his last two games, 16 catches, 260 yards. But right there, it's what he did without the football. Just like the great wide receiver for Oklahoma, Mark Clayton throwing the crackback block that led to the big, big run by Adrian Peterson. That time, Haverty giving his cohort an opportunity to perform. He got that huge score, the final second of the first half, but that was the impetus for the second half comeback. The Texas Tech last week, Cumbie, underneath its glover. Made the most of it, got about five. Bassey wraps him up, I'm on the edge. Oklahoma doesn't really mind being spread out. They feel that they can make plays in space, they can tackle it. And they're playing off a little bit, giving a little bit of a cushion here. You can see uh, nobody's in any kind of a press scenario, a little bump and run action, and, and rolling coverage, bringing the corner off to safety over. Pretty good tackling in the open field. That's what you have to do. Once the catch is made, you have to limit the journey after catch. So like a good run on first down, five yards to Glover. Three minutes left in the quarter. It'll be second and five. Bump fake in the... Screen on the opposite side, a great open field tackle. Otherwise, Henderson's got a big, big play. Bassey came up from his corner slot. Yeah, and if Bassey doesn't make that tackle, Joel, you are right. The reason is they blitzed the linebackers. They brought the linebackers inside. And when the linebackers blitz, they're not there to pursue in the screen. If Bassey doesn't make that one-on-one -on -one play in space, it could go a long, long way. Recall the screen when Oklahoma was blitzing, but Bassey was athletic. It could have been a home run ball. You're right. That could have gone the distance for Henderson. Very similar to what happened when he took it up the middle last week against Kansas for 70 yards, and the middle was available because they were blitzing. Love of the motion man and Cumby uses his second timeout of the first half. So we've got 209 to play in the first quarter. A seven now third and short. Reminds me, Yomi Ofinski. <laughs> third and a little more than two. Shy of the 42. 209 to play in the quarter. We try Henderson on the ground. They stack in the middle of the field. And out of the time, he's going to change the play. He's got plenty of time still on the play clock, though. Still at seven. Early, yeah. Henderson bouncing, gets the first down. Not a bad check with me, Sonny Cumbie. Yep, and, and really, look at how far he had to go to get the handoff. That's because of the line splits. I mean, when, when Cumbie gets the football, he has to sprint to get the ball to Henderson because Henderson's running off tackle. I mean, when you talk about stretching the field, they're stretching the field in the running game because of those massive splits up front. Pretty good tackle once again in the open field by Brodney Poole, but you have to... Uh, you have to credit that offensive line of getting their blocks accomplished and spreading that Oklahoma defensive front way, way out horizontally. It wasn't a sprint draw either, was it? No, just he just handed it off. Henderson again battling his way out of the backfield, catching up Dan Cody. What a player on the edge at 6'5", 265, the senior from Ada, Oklahoma. He had 17 behind the line last year. Consensus all Big 12. He had 10 tackles uh, last season as well. Cumby uh, has completed uh, 10 passes, for, and, and after after those 10 completions, 50 yards after the reception of the football, an average of uh, five yaks per attempt. A little more than a minute to play in the quarter. Tech still down by seven. They pick up the blitz up the middle, so Cumby tries. Oh! Almost intercepted after the deflection. Alexander tipped it. Mitchell thought he was going to get it. Yep, the linebackers almost combined for a massive play. The only two linebackers on the field. Is Cumbie a little nonchalant or is it just me? <laughs> Cumbie, 
Somebody's got some confidence to him. Man, is he a cool cat. And Brett Venables bringing them again. Here they come. The two linebackers right up to shoot and watch them get after it here. A little blood cross. Linebackers and, and I tell you, that's a nice adjustment. Alexander makes the deflection and Lance Mitchell can't quite come up with it. Lance Mitchell made a nice adjustment in his blitz rush laying on. That's just uh, mixing it up. Brent Venables bringing the linebackers. The running back, though, got the chip. He slowed down Alexander, but that's coming. Thinking, oh, I got more time. Inside of a minute left. Up for grabs. Flag on the play and overshooting. Is tall one out there, Jared Hicks. Eric Bassey on the coverage, but a flag coming from way deep in the secondary. Yeah, there was some contact on the underneath route. Let's see if it's offensive or defensive. And they're going to call holding on Oklahoma. Grab during the course of the route. So an automatic first down coming up for Tech. You know, the thing about Oklahoma's defensive football team. Holding an eligible receiver by number five of the defense. <sighs> Penalty is 10 yards, and it's an automatic first down. That's, That's a nickel. Shelby, the senior from Kansas City. There's Bo. And he was, of course, with Frank Solich last year as their coordinator. And their co-coordinators, Brent Venables and Bo Pelini. And, you know, the bye week or the week off for Oklahoma was good because Bo Pelini had never seen the Texas Tech spread offense. He didn't have to prepare for it when he was at Nebraska. So it gave him a week to get his defensive players in the secondary a little bit more ready and, and incorporate some of his uh, wrinkles and scheme. Deepest penetration so far by Tech at the Oklahoma 37 to first and 10. Come be again buying time. Flushed out. Man. Gets close to the line of scrimmage. Look at yards. So it'll be second and nine. Jackson forcing him out the end on that side. You got to be a cool customer in this offense, and that's exactly what Cumbie is. And oh. when they trail, it doesn't bother him. No, there, there's no doubt about that. And, and that's the that's the thing that Mike Leach in, in his football team, I think, feels secure in. The fact that they have come from behind back-to-back -back weeks by 21 and 25 points. You don't want to make a habit of it, but it gives you a confidence that you're never out of a football game. And you can always find a way to come back and score with this explosive offense. And Cumbie feels it, as do his teammates. Well, they've held right now. Oklahoma at only seven in the first quarter and I'll you tell you you can hold Oklahoma at home to in the 20s they're on pace to do that is it to give the Henders in the counter outside you're talking about the team speed defensively getting over it was Poole and Mitchell but that shows you the lateral pursuit and the way some of these backers can run with running backs yeah and that's uh that's a safety that's built like a linebacker 6'3 198 pounds and to run like that I mean, Henderson looked like he had a leverage a little bit. Looked like Texas Tech had leveraged Oklahoma's defense a little, bouncing it to the outside. And that speed distorts things. I mean, speed distorts, distorts the geometry of the game, the angles that you have to take. Yeah, that is going to be the final snap. A very entertaining first 15 minutes of play. And granted, Tech is not on the scoreboard yet. But to no decision. As far as they're concerned, it's like it's a draw so far in the first 15 minutes of play. The trail by only seven at Oklahoma. It's a ball game. We've got a good one. Head of the first quarter, Oklahoma by seven. All set up. The touchdown by Peterson after his 61-yard run. You're watching College Football Saturday, presented by Kia Zero on FSN. Be right back to Norman. And the facilities have been built in a very short time frame. That's a, a million dollar, 6,000 square foot facility right there, and it's awesome. All of Oklahoma's history right there. Off the edge, the heat comes over the middle. What a grab. It was deflected. It too. looked like Tra Trey Haverty got the ball mm -hmm. after it was tipped yeah. at the 23. Haverty's the one that slipped in his route against Kansas and, and deflected a ball off his hand that was an interception. This time, the ball's tipped up the line of scrimmage and rerouted. You can see the the spin on the football has changed and, and Haverty stays with it and, and makes a good adjustment to the football and actually rerouting it it took it to a better place for him to make a play in front of Nicholson and Haverty is coming off the best game of his career he caught that big one right before halftime and that deflated everybody in Kansas so now first down to the 23 Henderson tried to make a miss. What penetration to the backfield, though? Getting in there, Rufus Alexander, the weak side backer, a sophomore from Baton Rouge. The crowd chanting Ruth for Rufus. Well, balance is what they're looking for. They didn't have it before the Kansas game. It started to evolve a little bit more with the balance they're looking for. Well, in the last two games, 
uh, TCU and Kansas, they ran the ball 54 times. This is before the Kansas game. You see the imbalance, and then with the Kansas game, a little more balance. Over 500 yards offense again, but creeping up near 200 rushing. And, and running it 54 times the last two weeks is keeping defenses very, very honest. And they're, they're running Henderson a little bit today, too. Second and 14. Cumbie faking one way, trying to go back the other way. And almost got it in there. Going over to Olamua is tied in. So it'll be third and 14. Now this is a six and a half minute drive already. There's no points on the board. And at the end of the first quarter, Cumbie and the Red Raiders had the ball for 11 of the first 15 minutes. That's what they need the rest of the day to stay in it. And, and really, that is uh, ball control and melting the clock with a controlled possession passing attack. And that's what they're doing. And that's Texas Tech at its best. A lot of the times, it's only a you know five-yard reception and make a few yards after the play and, and keep moving the chains that way. It's almost like long laterals a lot of the time. And then they lull you to sleep at that short intermediate passing game and then go over the top on you. Tech close to 40 percent. Huge third down. Lane to throw the ball is there and a first down to Hicks. Can he get there? No. He caught it at the marker, gave up a yard or two, and it cost him. He's back at the 15. Shelby gets to him. I think Mike Leach goes for it here. Yes. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure he's going to go for the field goal opportunity. His place kickers have struggled for him somewhat. And Mike is a guy that goes for it on fourth down. And uh, it looks like this time he may run the field goal team onto the onto Well, the you know what? After thinking about it with Tree Leak and the redshirt freshman out of friends with Texas coming in, I don't know if this is a bad idea. We've well, had it for almost seven minutes. You've taken it from your own one. Get you don't want to come up empty. Yeah, get points from the board. It is going to be a 31-yard field goal. It's back and it's down on its way, and it pays off. Good decision. Points on the board. Reward your offense for a drive that started way back at their own goal line. I agree. That's contrary to his usual line of thinking, though, but that was a good call. Raiders on the board. Sooners get it back, leading by four. Oklahoma won the national championship. Mike Leach had been the offensive coordinator in charge of the passing game. Mark Mangino. He was the assistant head coach, run game coordinator. So, look at this story. yeah, that's for, that may be the longest they see all year, holding on to the ball for 720. And, and Mike Leach, his first recruiting class, Heupel, Hibble, and White. All three of those quarterbacks, I mean, he, he did box in his favor by getting three quarterbacks that can run an offense remarkably well. Too good, got under it. And the up man taking it is Travis Wilson, the wide receiver. He's got it across the 25. To... All right, Mike, we've got a first and 10, and Peterson back into the game. They look at his arm. He's okay. He's across the 30, and Adrian Kurt Peterson up, up to the 31-yard line. Well, we had mentioned that he was rated the number one high school running back in the nation last year in Palestine, Texas. And you can see already, I mean, he looks like Eric Dickerson out there in high school. Well, it, it's it's a tough deal when the biggest guy in the field is also the fastest guy in the field. I mean, he's as, good, as big as anybody out there, as big as his lineman, and it, it's taken four and five defenders to bring him down. It is definitely a man amongst boys. Got to back of Yard into the secondary. Look out! And finally brought down. Otherwise, it's a touchdown of Huffman to do it to him. He has got some high knee action. He does run very upright, but this kid is legit. He has got tremendous vision and, and anticipates cuts very well. And you cannot arm tackle him. He has got some acceleration and some power to him. And great vision, as you can see. Play side, the hole wasn't available. Went back, cut it against the grain. He gets 27 yards on the carry. Texas Tech is underestimating his speed because they're not getting there. They're just arm tackling. Now it's nine carries, 102 yards already for Peterson. As it goes to the 40-yard line, Peterson gets three more. He had 183. He's going to have new career highs on a regular basis. Now this is another record because he's over 100 yards for the fourth straight week, and he had a record of being the first true freshman in Oklahoma history to uh, rush for over 100 yards three his first three games, making his first four now, so he's adding to that record. He is incredible. And by the way, we saw that high school footage. His high school average, he had 12 yards of carry in high school. Yeah. That's, <laughs> DJ that's Wolf cool. is in the backfield. They'll throw on the little slip screen to Clayton. Almost got the seal. Did not get enough, though. And he's dropped. It's going to bring up still. Third and long as we head back downstairs. Jim Knox. Yeah, hard to believe, guys. He scored 32 touchdowns in high school. His nickname, A.D., because he can run all day. His favorite player, 
Ricky Williams. Believe it or not, he has a poster of the former Longhorn on his wall. Adrian Peterson, he's quite a show. You know, in, in Noxie, uh, Gene Poole is the biggest deal. His mother was a high school sprinter on the track team. His dad was an incredible basketball player. And that, with that Gene Poole, you come up with something special, and that's what this kid is. Slide Runnels, the H-back. Peterson again, slowed down and then rocked, loses the football. What a break, it went right back to him on the ground. What a break as it went to the wide receiver on the ground, Peoples. Rank Brinkley created the fumble. So. And this is something that you're going to have to learn ball security. You know, when you, you get in a crowd, wrap it up with two hands, because uh, one guy's going to stand you up, the next one's going to try to rip it out of there, and that's exactly what Texas Tech does. But boy, Peoples on the ground, yeah, very fortuitous for it to just come right to him. It's almost like uh, Peterson passes it to him as he, as he loses the football. And it's deflected back. It may have given him a first down the way it went forward. So it was created by Brinkley, the junior from Stewart, Florida, a transfer from Reedley College. But that's what's going to happen with a guy that breaks as many tackles as Peterson. Do they have it or not? Let's go short. <laughs> Just a little bit. And the, the Oklahoma coaches, it, it's, not, it's not real sophisticated what they do. I've seen them run two different running plays so far with Peterson. But they run it out of a lot of different looks. They'll motion a tight end, they'll motion a fullback. They'll hit the six hole multiple ways, but they'll hit the six hole a bunch of times. So defensively, you know what they're going to run. It's just how they're going to get there to run it. And, and with that motion and, and window dressing and formation, they try to give you a little bit of confusion defensively and leverage you, and that's what they're successful doing. Peters, Peterson, rather, and Runnels. Split an offset to the right. Peterson for the first down. He's got it. Down inside the 28 to the 27. So already over 100 yards. Adrian Peterson. The topic of our discussion with Bob Stoops. Adrian's uh, done what we had hoped uh, he could be. And, and I believe there's a lot more to come as he matures and grows and learns more of the offense and, and truly understands. And, and as we keep saying, as the game keeps slowing down for him to where he, he sees it all, so, uh, you know, and again, as long as he keeps a great attitude about his work ethic and, and learning it all, yeah, he's got great potential, and, and he's given us the big plays in the running game that, that, that we had hoped for. He's already got a 61-yard carry, a 27-yard carry, a play fake now for White out on the edge. On the comeback route, it's knocked away. Almost to Will Peoples. Good coverage. Nazir Udin. Got a hand in there. Nazir Udin did a good job of recovering. Because he was uh, he was fooled a little bit on the route, but the ball hung up just a little bit. Jason White rolls to his left. Little play action fake. You got to stop Peterson, and he he draws a crowd. But there is good defensive uh, pressure on on White as he throws it. Is there a Dean? A little bit of push off, a little bit of a separation there. But look at him recover. That's nice recoverability. Get back to the route and uh, get involved. So slow start for Jason White, but a couple could have been ground, like that last one, and also one in the end zone for a touchdown. Now White's going to keep it, take the shot on his way out of bounds. He'll be short of the first down. He's at the 26, five shy of where he needed to go. Fletcher's session over there. And Jason White, this is what he was unable to do last year because he was so beaten up physically. Now, as we've talked about a couple of times, you know, running without the braces. And, and this kid, in a three-year time frame, two, re two knee reconstructions and a Heisman Trophy, you talk about the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. I mean, for him to come back from two reconstructions and win the Heisman is, is legendary stuff. Third down is where he's been phenomenal, as has the team. Two of every three that have been successful, Joe. Yeah, he needs a little more than four, almost five on third down. He's 28, one of 28 on third downs. Make it 22. 29, Clayton's got the first to go and almost tied a record for Jason White with that catch. One more touchdown toss, and White is the all-time record holder along with Josh Heupel for touchdown tosses in Oklahoma history. And this is where Jason White has a, has a keen understanding of where to go with the football. And, and his, his incredibly gifted receiver, Mark Clayton, gets in the perfect spot between cornerback and safety. 
This kid is the hardest worker on the team. He's always trying to come up with a new wrinkle, a new way to run out. He's always trying to learn, and that's what makes Clayton the real deal. From the eight, first in goal, Oklahoma. Trying to add to their 7 3 lead. Peterson tripped up, going low to the five. He's upset. Usually you don't get Peterson. And it looked like a guy just barely got a piece up going by. And once again, Texas Tech feels a big key is their defensive tackles. They're very active inside. They do a lot of twisting, a lot of stunning inside. And they have to be able to handle the inside offensive line. Carter, Joseph, and Bush of Oklahoma. If they don't at least stalemate or knock those guards backwards a little bit, they feel they're going to have trouble. What about the tight end down here? Well, Jason White wasn't ready with the personnel he had. Uses Oklahoma's second timeout. We'll do the same with 837 left in the half as the number two team of the nation driving for their second score. So Mike Leeds leaving Oklahoma after that season in 1999. Mike was a graduate yes. assistant in Oklahoma. And you know what he did this week, Joel? He ran Texas Tech's offense. Obviously, he knows the spread offense, having been with Leach at Oklahoma. He was in charge of giving Oklahoma's defense the picture, the look of Texas Tech's offense. Will they throw to a tight end or keep it on the ground? Toss sweep. Adrian Peterson. Ball All start. start. Yeah. Cost him five. Take it back to the 10. It'll be second and goal from the 10. Boy, that's got to burn you as a coach, though, coming out of a timeout. You use a timeout to get what you want personnel and play-wise on the field. And it was a good call. Prior to the snap, a false start by number 60 of the offense. Penalty is five yards, and it's second down. Yeah, that's a three-year starter at left tackle, Wes Sims. Got to remember the snap count. And this is Sims at the left tackle position. And there he goes. Oop, a little early. More than a little early. You know, and when you have to reach inside, you have to almost get a full man inside and get your cutoff block. You want to get off on the snap count. That time, Sims was anticipating, and you can't do that. You can't guess. You can't anticipate. You have to wait for the quarterback actually calls the cadence out. So now they bring the wide receivers back out where they had two tight ends before. As Jones and Peoples are back out there with Clayton. Trips over to the near side. Right out of the gun. Corner of the end zone. Oklahoma and Travis Wilson. White just ties Heifel. 53 career touchdown tosses now for Jason White. Tying the all-time Sooner record. Boy, that was a pretty ball. Jason White throws a nice ball. And accurate, perfect trajectory. So a 10-yard score, a long drive by the Sooners. And with eight and a half to play, DiCarlo for the point after. And all of a sudden, Oklahoma counters the field goal with six of their own. Tag on an extra point. So the Sooners lead by 11. Trying to go 34-1 and one at home under Bob Stoops. For the Sooners, 112 for Texas Tech. No ground game at all, though, for Texas Tech. Everything through the air. They have no balance whatsoever. DiCarlo gets into it, and it'll come out to the 20. So Texas Tech gets it for the fourth time this afternoon on College Football Saturday. On FSN is presented by People Friendly Document Solutions, only from Kia Sarah. By Dr. Pepper. BU, nothing's better. It's Dr. Pepper. By Doc. Grab life by the horns. And the first down line brought to you by Overstock.com, your online outlet. It's all about the O. That's what they need now. The big O for Texas Tech. Well, can they have balance? Because they're facing one of the most balanced teams in the country in the Oklahoma Sooners. Last game for Oklahoma, they couldn't ask for anything more. 214 on the ground, 213 through the air. And for their first three, pretty close to that. They'll give it to Glover, who was the motion man. And takes a shot. Coming out of the secondary, pulled the free safety. Did not let him go back against the pursuit. So no gain on the carry. In fact, maybe a loss of one and a half yard. It'll be second and ten. 
Brent Venables that time changed up and went with three down linemen, but walked all the linebackers up into gaps at the line of scrimmage. They all stayed on their feet. They all strung it out. They all made the play. They all kept their gap control responsibilities intact. That was just an excellent team defensive snap right there. Second and long for the Red Raiders. They'll have the motion man again. Pocket holds up for Cumby. And behind Haverty, he still makes the catch. By yard, he's got the first down. And don't forget, this is the Big 12 opener for the Sooners, coming off a bye. And Bob Stoops said they needed a bye because they were nicked up. It's also their fourth consecutive home game. It's only the third time that has ever happened in Sooner history. And the Sooners are 14-3 and three after a week off under Bob Stoops. Counting bowl games, you know, with time off between games, 14 and three, which is pretty impressive. 33 and one at home under Bob Stoops. And on the other hand, Tech's got to feel like they're living out of a suitcase for a college team. Fourth time over the first five weeks they have been on the road. And back to back to start the Big 12 season. On first down, Henderson doing a good job, barely tripped up. He gets almost eight on first down. Finally, they got a ground game. A little bit of something on first down. Tripped up by Jonathan Jackson. And, and this is a, a, a big key. The offensive line does a good job with those big splits. You can see there are natural holes created. Oklahoma can't separate from those blocks and get into the gaps quickly enough to stop a guy like Henderson. Henderson has tremendous vision himself, a low center of gravity, and gets the ball upfield quickly. So they say it's about seven, a little more than seven. Caught it second and three. That's... Do they lope or let it go? Cummings on his way down. A fumble. And they say his arm was going forward. Well, the left tackle took the inside track. He never saw Shelby for some reason on the corner of his eye oh, on Shelby. the outside. Shelby's the hot guy. You have to protect from the inside out. And Cummings, they, they move... They moved the pocket away from Shelby, but Shelby still ran it down from behind. You just have to get rid of the football quicker. Now that was his arm going forward. And Cumbie's right now, he feels Shelby coming. No. It's an empty hand. His hand's empty as it's coming forward. And Shelby just comes unabated from that blind side. Boy, what a break. That's a break for Texas Tech. Tech. Wanted, he wanted the turnover. He, he said, my man Shelby, out of the secondary, came blindside. That's a fumble. That's not an incompletion. Bo wanted that battle. You know, Oklahoma still has no interceptions coming up on six quarters. I mean, excuse me, uh, 14 quarters of play with no interceptions. It's uncharacteristic. The last four years, they've had 20 or more. Red Raiders, four of seven on third downs. Make it five of eight. What a dart that was as it's taken in by the tight end, Olamua. Olamua is, is a factor in the red zone, a factor on third down. This guy is 6'5", 260-plus pounds. Little crossing route underneath, shallow cross is what Texas Tech makes its living on, and that's a big fella that can run because Oklahoma has great team speed defensively. Ingram, a linebacker, tight end on linebacker. That's kind of a wash matchup-wise, and Olamua won it. So the drive alive, back-to-back -back first downs. Efficient, 133 yards on 14 completions. Cumbie trying to corral it, a hot potato. Hold coming up, it'll bring it all back. Yeah, no work. It'll stay right in the hands of Shelby with the interception. He pulled her, threw it up for grabs. And Oklahoma will decline the penalty. Yeah, Shelby says, okay, if you're not going to give me the forced fumble, I'll take the first interception this season for my football team. And, and now there's... Holding the, by number 64 of the offense. Penalty decline. They, they, got, first down. they got Cody Campbell for the infraction for the hold. But this one's just lofted. And, and uh, that's a throw you don't want to make into double coverage. Brandon Shelby comes up with Oklahoma's first interception of the season. Bo Pelini says, oh, thank goodness. It was a long time coming, but it came at a very opportune time. And, and look at their takeaway mentality. Oklahoma's defense puts their offense in great position, field position-wise, as well as extra possessions. Bob Stoops likes that aggressive mentality defensively. Well, the last time they took it away, and it was a fumble by Cumbie the last time, Perkins just tripped him as Peterson gets nothing. They also didn't get a point out of that turnover, starting at the Tech 34. All right, the Hokies at home. Even though West Virginia, top 10 team, Mike, not a shock with the way the Hokies play in Blacksburg. Clayton, nifty move after the catch. He's got about seven. It'll bring up third and three, put down by Mike Smith, the weak side backer. 
So a little more than five minutes to play. In a few minutes, we're going to be talking in just a short period of time to Wes Welker, one of the great receivers we have seen in, and one of the, in the Big 12, goals. right, in, in recent history. Wes Welker now a Miami Dolphin in the National Football League, but he punt return touchdowns in his storied career at Texas Tech, tying an NCAA record. Now can they convert? They need three, and they've got the first down. Going over to the tight end, Bubba Moses, the senior from Houston, and remembering what Wes Welker meant to this team. And we did a few of them, Dave. Yeah. It was amazing. Saw this one. He set the record at Texas Tech against Colorado last season. His eight punt return touchdown of his magnificent career was an NCAA record at the time. And Antonio Perkins, early this season, the great punt returner for Oklahoma, tied Wes Welker's eight punt return touchdowns. And we've got Wes Welker with us now. And uh, Wes, what's it take to be a great punt return guy? Oh, shoot, just uh, watching a lot of film on Antonio Perkins is the main thing. <laughs> and, uh, that guy's pretty good, so uh, I've had a good time just watching him. Uh, and, and, Wes, it's it's got to be interesting for you as the comeback, and they can't convert it to Wilson on that route. Uh, you're also from Oklahoma, so growing up so close in Lawton, Oklahoma, obviously the Sooners program meant a great deal to you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, growing up, I was a Sooners fan, and, you know, it, it didn't work out where I could go to um, Oklahoma, but it really worked out for the best. I got to play for uh, Texas Tech, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I bleed the red and black now, and, and you know, I'm just uh, happy to be a, an alum from there. Well, we're showing your, your incredible high school statistics right now. And, and what is the biggest thing for a successful returner of the kicking game? Is it making that first guy miss? Yeah, absolutely. It's crucial to be able to make guys miss and, and get enough field and, and really just having the confidence to go out there and make plays. And, and uh, you know, if you take care of that, then everything else takes care of itself. We're talking to Wes Welker, all-time NCAA record holder with eight returns. Antonio Perkins has tied him in that category as he brought one back earlier this season. And, well, we're looking at some of the records now. We saw the high school numbers with 90 scores in high school. Pretty amazing numbers. The the NCAA records that Wes set down in Lubbock. And Wes, you're still talked about, held in high regard, obviously, by your teammates at Texas Tech and your coaches. Holding, and holding by number 60 of the offense. Well, it, yeah, it's just one of those things where, um, you know, I, I go back quite a bit and I work out with a lot of those guys and, and you know, try and teach them a strong work ethic and, and uh, get to know a lot of them. Uh, even some of the younger guys, but yeah, a lot of my best friends are still on the team, and and uh, you know I stay in touch with a lot of them on a regular basis. Mike Leach says that your attitude of never say die, you know, uh, football is one play at a, at a time. As long as there's a play left, you're still in the game. That's what kind of the mantra of this football team with the Red Raiders. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, it's just one of those deals where the game's never over. You got to keep on playing that way, and. And, you know, the main thing is to look back on your career and have no regrets about anything. And, and, uh, you know, I can honestly say that's the way I feel about it. And, and you know, that's just the way I, I continue to play. And, and uh, you know, it's got me to the level I'm at now. So I just got to keep on with it. Hey, Wes, we appreciate your taking the time. Congratulations on a phenomenal college career and continued success on Sundays with the Dolphins. All right, well, thank you all very much. I appreciate it. All right, and I got to tell Wes, Stephen, hi. So, Stephen, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Wes, thank you. Right. Oklahoma native, Wes Welker. And he will be loved forever by Red Raider fans. We know that. White on the deflection and almost picked off. Will they throw a flag? Yes. He was going for Wilson. It was contact, they say, from Wrangell. The umpire is going to go out and say the ball was deflected at the line of scrimmage. He's going to say yes. it was tipped, so that's going to wave off the penalty. Good call. They're going to pick the flag up. No, no interference once the ball is deflected at the line the of scrimmage. The pass was tipped, therefore there's no foul. Now, how fortunate is that? After a couple of first downs, the penalty hurt. And a punting situation, that's two turnovers and no points off those turnovers for Oklahoma. Right, and, and you see there, there's obvious contact before the arrival of the football, but the ball arrives late because it's tipped at the line of scrimmage. So even though there is serious contact, it's waved off. Once the ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage, it's anybody's ball, it's a free ball. Danny Amendola wades back at the 10, the punt. And Blake Ferguson, the senior from Broken Arrow. Ends up a very high spiral. 
And Amendola doesn't find a fair catch. You got to have guts back. Right? I mean, you have to have. And blinders. Yeah. You've got it to the 22. Talk about tunnel vision. Courage is key. <laughs> So first and 10, Texas Tech. They're down by 11. It could be worse, though. After the pick, when Oklahoma add the ball to their own 40-yard line. Now Tech at the 21. And we get points, even if it's only a field goal. With 2.59 to play in the half. Anderson chopped down early, only a yard. Shelby came up to the line anyway. Well, the last time, you know, Tech won on a 16-play drive, they started from their own one-yard line. Put in a 16-play drive together against Oklahoma is excellent. You don't usually get that many, many plays run successfully against this good a defense. But backed up like that, even coming up to be a problem against Texas Tech, not near third. Bottom of your screen trips wide side of the field. Cumby underneath. He had the man for a half hour. Finally, Glover. If he goes there earlier, he's got more room to succeed after the catch. But Mitchell was on his back. And we talked about Oklahoma's offense being very simple. They run a few running plays, four running plays out of different looks. Defensively, they run a couple of different fronts and three different coverages. You know exactly what they're going to do, but it's like the great defenses in college and the NFL in the past. It's like, here we are, beat us. And they just play great technique, and they rep, rep things play after play. They know exactly where they're supposed to be. They're coached effectively, and it's hard to beat them because they're so talented physically. Here it comes, third and short. Keep the drive alive. What a grab. Glover on the boundary. He's got it to the 37. And precision on the pass because the D-back, Onya Nogetcha, say that five times fast, was really close to coming up with it. And this tests the arm strength. When you have a, a, an out pattern that's uh, fairly significant down the football field and you have to go all the way to the sideline with some velocity on it, that shows if you have the, the strength to be able to hit areas of the field and this spread offense is necessary and Cumbie's got plenty of arm strength. So first and ten of their own 37. Tech with only one timeout remaining in the half. Plenty of time for Cumby and through the hands of Glover on the shallow cross underneath. And he had some yards available after catch if he could have secured that football. And that's uh, tough on second down. Now it's, it, it's, a, it's a situation where you're off schedule instead of on schedule. Well, Cumby's only been picked off once, as you see his total so far. High percentage. Even after that miss, and it should have been a catch. Second and ten, minute 39 to play in the first half. Three down linemen, three linebackers, five defensive backs, and nickel with only three guys up front pressuring. Two to each side for Cumbie to work with. Again in the flat, it's Henderson. Did he make one miss? Well, no, but he still gets up past the 42 to the 44, going down to the arms of Perkins. So a key third down. With the clock moving, and we remind you the first down line is all brought to you by Overstock.com. Visit Overstock.com today. Start saving. It's all about the O at Overstock.com. Well, it's rare when Texas Tech wins the battle in time of possession, but that's going to be the case in the first half of play, despite the fact that they're down by 11. And so the blitz will it come? Yes, it does. Gumby better get rid of it in a hurry. Beats the blitz. Has the first down. His wide receiver, Cody Fuller, got it in front of Perkins. And check that. First catch of the day instead. It was for Texas Tech coming out of the backfield. That grab was Brian Bishop. Eight guys at the line of scrimmage. They bring eight this time and only leave three in coverage. And Cumbie does a good job of avoiding pressure. So... Venables and Pelini doing a good job of mixing it up. You can't stay in one thing too long against Texas Tech because Mike Leach will figure it out and he'll pass it along to Cumbie. You have to change it up with your pressure packages and coverages. First and ten, but you also have to make sure they don't break containment. Absolutely. Henderson on the play that worked against Kansas. It works again for another first down. Lawrence Walk on the sideline. Follow the bouncing ball. Cumbie in trouble on his way down. Coming in, Jonathan Jackson looked like a little twist from the end. Absolutely. They ran a little stunt up front. Cut upset with the big boys for allowing that penetration to get to him. So the sack back to the 42, wiping out field goal territory. They have to use their final timeout. And watch the crisscrossing action that takes place up front here. A little bit of a twist going on. 
You see it? In, in, totally clean. You know, it's, you had two linemen blocking the same guy in a Simon era period. A little bit of a slide protection and two guys locked up on one. So 17 seconds to play. Another sack for Oklahoma. What Texas Tech wanted to get done today was they're, they're kind of streaky. They'd have 10 good plays and then four bad plays in a row. They want to cut it down to 10 good plays and one or two bad plays and, and, and get in a, in, in a little bit better rhythm. How about a team trailing by 11 of their 7 of 10 on their third down tries? Now, we just saw that shot of the stands here at Memorial Stadium in Norman, Oklahoma. There's very few places. We go to College Station, we talk about how great it was. Everything right about college football. You go to College Station, Austin, you can throw into the category Normans right there at the top of the list. Absolutely, it's a tremendous venue. A lot of history, seven national championships. We support the Sooners, obviously. Now, on the long situation, Cumbie did a good job to avoid another sack. On second and 17, still the opportunity the linesman coming over to talk to the referee. Rufus Alexander wanted an intentional ground. Well, they had Hicks in the neighborhood. And Bob that was just a good idea. Bob Stoops doesn't like it either. That time brought seven and, and, and put four into coverage. Trent Venable and Bo Pelini changing it up again. Seven guys. You see everybody hitting the lanes. The pressure in his face. Has he thrown it away to avoid the sack? Is there somebody he's throwing it to? He's just throwing it well, well into behind the Oklahoma bench. Bob Stoops, I think, and Bo Pelini. And, Coach Venables all have a legitimate uh, legitimate complaint there. He threw that away in the pocket to avoid the sack. 70% of their third downs, but they don't need 17 if they can get into the boundary and set up for a field goal. Could be their final snap. Deep down the middle, he overshoots an available Nehemiah Glover. And it was incredible he was that available because they had eight in coverage. Only rushed three that time and dropped eight. So we've seen rush eight, drop three, rush seven, drop four. This time, rush three, drop eight. So that's what I'm talking about, about changing things up and not letting Cumby and, and Mike Leach, the play caller, get into a rhythm. And just a little bit too much on that one. Only rush three guys. Five guys better block three, and they did. There's, you know, five on three. You better be able to give your quarterback a pocket, and, and Cumby stepped up into a vacated area because... The poor nose guard was triple team. The tackles took the ends up field on their own. Fourth and 17. Should be the final play of the half. Into the end zone it goes. Jump ball. And it's intercepted. Final play of the half. Dipped off by the Sooners. Brodney Poole. So, Brett Venables, Bo Pelini, the defensive coordinators have to be pleased holding a Texas Tech squad who's fourth overall in the nation in total offense to only three points. We head down to Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, thanks, Joe. Coach, you got to be pleased slowing down the Tech offense, just three points considering they had the ball for over 18 minutes in the first half. Well, we're tackling well, making them throw it up in front of us, and they throw a lot of short passes. So, that part of it's good. Uh, you know, offensively, we've been close. Uh, you know, a couple of drives where we had really good field position. We needed to make something happen on those. I appreciate the time, Coach. Okay, Best of luck in the second half. Joe? Yeah, Noxie's absolutely right. They added the Tech 34, didn't get a point. Added their own 40 after another turnover. Didn't score a point. But they'll take an 11-point lead into the locker room. 14-3 Oklahoma as we join Mike Goldberg, Kellen Winslow, Billy Raceman. Gentlemen, take it away. it away in fact three turnovers the first two though great field position they did not make the most of it well that's very true I mean that, that says a lot right there both teams had identical total yards in the first half you can see it 178 yards Oklahoma's a little more balanced than Texas Tech but Tech eight more first downs two turnovers uh, hurt Tech obviously and then the, the stat though that doesn't show up there is a 20 yard differential on average drive start times five possessions 100 hidden yards against Texas Tech Peterson was the story for Oklahoma. He got a great crackback block by Mark Clayton. He was off to the races for a, a 60 yard run right there. Now he shows his ability to lower that shoulder, break tackles. He showed his speed. Now he's showing his power. Look at him gallop through tackles here. High knee action and, and away he goes. And then the Nissan leaders in the first half, Jason White, finished strong, had a slow start. He had his touchdown that ties Heupel for most touchdown passes in a career at Oklahoma. Peterson, nice game, obviously, with a couple of long runs. And 
Then on the flip side of it, Cummy got in a little bit of a rhythm. Not enough, though, Henderson. They did a good job on him on the ground and controlled Hicks pretty well as well defensively for Oklahoma. So we get ready for the start of the second half, as always. A sellout crowd, Norman, Oklahoma. I think they're sold out for 2060 here. It is that good a thing they've got going. The Oklahoma Sooners. And don't forget the basketball program. In very good shape with Kelvin Sampson as well as Johnny Mack is back along with Danny. Man, out of the end zone, downwind through DiCarlo as Texas Tech will start the second half with the football at their own 20 yard line. How about those keys to victory for Tech coming in? Well, the execution early wasn't too bad. You know, I'm going to give that a check. It capitalized on turnovers. They didn't get any. So, you know, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't helpful. This is the story of the game. Their average drive start their own 16. Oklahoma's at their 36. A 20 yard differential right there times five possessions is 100 yards of hidden yards. A football field of hidden yards against Oklahoma and a half against you is not uh, not good. And that's that's the biggest reason they're down 14-3 right now. From their own 20 yard line. Anderson, big hole up the middle. But Nichols in the strong safety made sure it didn't go for a first down. He got seven as we check in with Jim Knox. Knox All right, thank you, Joe. Just got through talking to Mike Leach, Tech head coach, told me he's pleased the way they're moving the ball. He says they got to keep on doing it, but they got to stick it in the end zone. Keep in mind, guys, time of possession the first half. Tech offense over 18 minutes. Talking to some of the players coming out in the second half, they said, hey, this is our half. We'll see what happens. It was the last two weeks. Well, Jim, this has been their quarter this year in the third quarter. Texas Tech has outscored the opposition 58 to 3. Their most points and fewest points allowed. Free snap. It was offside Oklahoma. They'll need it. It'll be an automatic first down as Mitchell took down Henderson. But they got the man over the nose to jump early. Get a move when the ball moves. Don't listen to the quarterback. Shut the quarterback out. When that football moves, tee off. Not before. Offsides on the defense, number 68. Five-yard penalty and replay second down. Carl Pendleton as our Big 12 official today is Cooper Castleberry. So mark off and an automatic first down with it. Well, TCU with their third quarter offense and then Kansas. And they shut out Kansas, don't forget. TCU almost made a game of it before it was all over. But Texas Tech. Dominated Kansas in the second half. Kansas had really only two scoring chances in the second half. They were long field goals and both were missed. From the 32, pocket holds up for Cumbie. And wide open. His wide receivers have her team inside the 25. Blown assignment. Nicholson, the safety, got over late. Uncovered by that much. Oh, man. In, in Oklahoma, in the secondary, talking it over right now. And Haverty is hot. The last two weeks, 16 catches for 260 yards. Protection sound. And how can you let Haverty just disappear like that along the sideline? He just blended in with the Texas Tech sideline, I guess. And take a look at it. Here he's at the top of the screen. Cornerback lets him go. He squats underneath. Now the safety, that's way too far. He can't get there. A blown assignment. Two guys jumped on the underneath route. They let Haverty go. Safety had no opportunity, relationship-wise, to get there in time. So playing a cover two zone, and he didn't take that side of the field. Well, the quarterback's got to ride him a lot longer down the field than he did. Anderson trying to adjust to the line of scrimmage and top two yards. He goes down to the 18. Well, we've seen it before over the last couple of weeks, and Bob Stoops knows all about it. the kind of comebacks Tech is capable of. No question. Uh, they've done it every year. This is this is not unlike any other years where you've seen them uh, continue to play. They continue to play hard, and to their credit, and you've heard Mike say this, whether he's up or whether they're down, they're going to continue to play in their same rhythm and their same way. Uh, we're, we've been aware of that uh, for all, all of the years that we've played them here in the last four years, that um, you've got to continue to play great defense, and you've got to continue to move the ball and score on offense as well. Yep, Bob Stoops lost his first game. Against that. He's won the last four, though. Take out quickly to Cody Fuller. Inside the 15, down to the 14. Jonathan Jackson, the end getting over there. This is a key third down coming up, though. I mean, you've 
You've stalled yourself too many times already in the first half. You're down by 11, opening possession of the second half, and you've had some big plays already. Uh, this is where I think about Olamua. They're in the red zone. The tight end has been a, a big factor in the red zone. 23 opportunities in the red zone for Texas Tech. They've scored 15 touchdowns. Pretty good ratio. I might think about uh, trying to get the ball out there to, to the big fella. He's setting up on the right side. Next to the right tackle, short side of the field. Gumby needs a little more than three. Boy, good find the protection. And is it? Yes, taken in at the eight-yard line. First down, Glover. That was a tough one. He hit the other wide receiver next to him. He could have almost deflected the ball. Yeah, and, and what happened was the play broke down. Olamua got bracketed. The play broke down, and then everybody's just running around trying to find an open spot. And, and Glover got the guy of Cumbie, found the open spot, and he delivered a strike. But you see, watch Olamua. He's doubled. He's bracketed right there. Now, now he's out of pocket. Now somebody just has to be a football player and try to get open. And Glover finds a little opening, settles in there, and Cumbie hits him. Good play. Anderson had to pull his hand back. Yeah. He almost touched the football. First and goal. Inside the eight. Oh, be in trouble. Horace got her down off the edge by Shelby. And that's Shelby's second time that he's uh, been disrupted. One time, thought it was a fumble. The Oklahoma coaches did, ruled an incompletion. But Shelby off the blind side is a thorn in the side. It's a loss back outside of the 10. Loss of a little more than three. So first and goal from the 11, or make it second and goal from the 11. Normally, you don't want to take a sack in the red zone. Mike Leach doesn't want to either. But this spread offense, it's not a big deal operating the spread offense from the 11-yard line. I mean, the, the down and distance and field position when you get in the red zone isn't that big of, a, of, of an issue as it is to some other offenses. He's got two to each side. And it centers into the backfield. The guy you want, Olamu, is on the right side. Anderson. Big hole closed in a hurry. The speed up front of Oklahoma. Shut him down inside the nine. Shelby coming over on the run support again. And I think uh, Oklahoma realized that Texas Tech was looking at Olamua too, the way they doubled him inside the red zone. And, and I think they're going to pay a lot of attention to him once again. He's a huge guy. You talked about it. He's 6'6", 260. Can run. And he's got some uh, athletic ability. The catch he made, the official didn't give it to him, but that two-point conversion catch against Kansas with the body control to come down and get both his feet inside the pylon is phenomenal. So here we go on third and goal. They have to settle for another field goal try. Come out of the gun. In the flat, it's Henderson. Can he get there? Deliberated too much of the five, only to the three. Rodney Poole coming up for the safety. Once again, you see the Oklahoma speed, though. It looked like there was a big separation there, and then whew, they closed on the football. I mean, they're saying, you know, we're going to keep them out of the end zone. We'll settle for giving them a field goal opportunity. But when, when the ball is caught, everybody's in the end zone. Everybody Now watch them close. Whoop, all of a sudden, they're at the five-yard line before you can take a breath. That's team defensive speed. And that's what Oklahoma possesses and limits it now to a field goal opportunity. Trelika already hit a 31-yarder. This is a 20-yard attempt. It's up. Man. It's an eight-point deficit for Texas Tech. So One-score game. You got it. Their points coming from their place kicker, the redshirt freshman. A very impressive start to the second half, hanging under the ball for better than five minutes for Texas Tech. Six. Our Red Raiders. If the most significant improvement in this team though, has been defensively for Mike Leach over the last couple of years, because they wouldn't hang. Oklahoma scored 60 and 56 on them the last two times they faced them. And Oklahoma fortunate to have 14 to the break because they did not have a lot of con consistency offensively. Lyle Setonsich and his defensive staff, tip of the cap, phenomenal job, and the kids have responded to what you're doing. Uh, they're much more confident. There's no panic anymore. They're getting lined up properly. And they're playing their techniques on a very sound basis. They've gone from one of the, the poorest defenses in the Big 12 to, a, to a, at least middle of the pack. Of they punch it. As you can see, the way it was set up, and Bradley's going to have it on one hop. Weaving his way across the 30, spinning nicely near the 35 yard line. Did you see the way they set it up? Yeah, yeah. You always see something different from Mike Leach. 
from the 35. Nine and a half to play. Oklahoma gets the ball for the first time in the third quarter. Peterson making him adjust. Finally, they catch up with him. On the run, it was Nixon, but he still got eight on first down. And revisiting what we looked at earlier, those keys to the game for Oklahoma. Yeah, I don't remember seeing it as an apparition or something like that. But at any rate, they wanted to be balanced. Not quite as balanced as they want to be at this point. Confused Cummy, they have gotten to him a little bit with some different looks. They've knocked him down a few times. Three sacks, a couple of interceptions. That's been their best of their keys. And they have not gotten the unconventional scoring yet in terms of a defensive touchdown or a touchdown on special teams. They've got 16 defensive touchdowns under Stoops, 24 special teams touchdowns with return. Jumbo luck and toss sweep. Peterson with a kick out to the tight end. Peterson looks like he's headed to the goal line. They're holding, coming back. And the crowd saw it right away. The crowd didn't get as vocal as you'd expect they would. Well, that wiped out a 57-yard touchdown run. Mm -hmm. He's already had a 61-yard run, a 27-yarder. He, he is a, a physical specimen, 18 years old. He's already before that run. He's holding got 125. Holding by number 55 of the offense. Penalty is 10 yards. Replay second down. Now that's the first team All-American from last year. Jamal Brown, the right tackle, he called it on. Yep. Jamal Brown got his hands outside the framework of the body. Take a look at him right here. The right tackle position. Comes up on the linebacker. They're calling they're calling the hand outside the uh, outside the framework of the body. He got the takedown. Got the hand up in the shoulder pad and twisting him to the turf. You gotta keep your hands inside the framework and they got Big Jamal with his hand outside. Once the umpire sees your hand on the outside of the cantilever, the shoulder pad, he's going to flag you a lot of times. So what turned into a dominating pancake block is called a hold and nullifying the huge touchdown. So instead of a score, it's going to be second and a dozen. The ball all the way back to the 33. Wide out of the gun. Underneath it goes. And the short game going to Brandon Jones. He was a senior wideout from Texarkana, Texas. Brought down by Brinkley. He'll be short of the first down by about two and a half. Clear out by Clayton. Yeah, just a little uh, underneath. He takes two with him. And the ball is thrown underneath. He takes two down the football field. And Jason White, as it unfolds, makes the, the clear-cut read and takes what the defense gives him. So what a day for Clayton as a team player. The big hit. Set up Peterson run. And then we see him setting up that 10 yard completion. So third and a couple. Peterson again. Pick your spot. He's got the first down, and there's another flag on the outside. And Brown again. Yes, yeah, Jamal Brown in the face. Oh. Vincent Meeks, the safety. And, and Vincent Meeks ended up taking Jamal Brown's helmet off. So I wonder if they're going to call Meeks for getting his hand up in the headgear. Nothing meek about the play? No, he was the not little guy meek. against the big guy? Not meek and mild on that one. Brown lost the lost the headgear. And he's uh, checking his nose to see if there's uh, if there's any blood there. And they are calling the face man. On Meeks for getting up in the grill. Jamal Brown, a, convert, a converted defensive lineman. And uh, I think Texas Tech probably feels that all those Oklahoma offensive linemen that converted defensive linemen are so athletic. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask on the defense. It's a 15-yard penalty from the end of the run and an automatic first down. It's a dead ball foul at the end of the run, and they already have the first down. Jamal Brown has got a mismatch size-wise, and Meeks is going to fight and scrape and battle for everything he possibly can. And here, here comes Jamal Brown. And, oh, it's not Meeks. It's the linebacker. Okay, he's working on the linebacker. That makes a, that makes a little bit more sense. Yes. As, as, as he's working down the field with Sylvester Brinkley. And Brinkley's just trying to hang on for dear life when he grabs the grill of Jamal Brown and rips his uh, face mask uh, and grabs the helmet and costs him 15 biggies. All the way to the 36. So after they had the touchdown wiped out, on their first series of the second half. Oklahoma has it in Texas Tech territory. We'll let Peterson try to get to the boundary again. Making a miss, not quite. He is stopped at the 32. Short gain of about four. 
Boy, he thinks he can run through tackles. There's no doubt about that. Now he gets up a little gimpy. Brought down by the weak side backer, Mike Smith. See, I think in high school, he can do that. Get out there, slam on the brakes, and cut back and give ground. Not, not at the next level. I think if he stayed at the point of attack and followed his fullback that time, who, who did a pretty darn good job for him. J.D. Runnell's got a nice block. He's trying to make every run a touchdown run. You have to kind of take what the defense gives you. As you see, they're not, they're almost averaging 250 yards a game on the ground. If you didn't have that touchdown run eliminated, they'd be close to it. Gators have again torpedoed early on the play. As Deke Bake got in, Nick cleaned up, but Dave, Deke Bake got in real early between the center and guard. The number one team in the nation running the football this year is in the Big 12. The Texas Longhorns at 370 yards again to give you an idea where Oklahoma is going to match up for the Big Red River battle next week. Well, you've got uh, Cedric Benson down there. You have Warren C. with Oklahoma State. You have some of the leading rushers in the country right in the Big 12, which is not a rarity. I mean, that's that's happened before. And Adrian Peterson, by the end of the season, is going to make some noise himself. And, of course, you get Darren Sproul. And eat four. Choice is in for the first time, the redshirt freshman. They go the other way, and they get the first down. It's complete. The wide receiver on that side. Will Peoples getting his first catch, the senior from Humble, Texas. Brought down by Nezru Dean. Nothing, uh, nothing too fancy here, nothing too special. There's cushion given, so he hooks it up. A little pitch and catch. What they try to do is get, get the corners to, to tighten their, their uh, separation a little bit, a little double move, go up over the top on them. First and 10 from the 25-yard line. And Joyce carrying the football. That's the young man we were just talking about from Lovejoy, Georgia. So they've got Peterson. We saw Wolf, another true freshman, DJ Wolf. This is a redshirt freshman, 6'1", 205. They're not stockpiling here in Oklahoma, though. I'll tell you, they're all, uh, they've all got big careers ahead of them. People's Choice right here makes a nice little, nice little cut. Pretty good vision himself. So a gain of about eight down to the 17. Different look. They haven't been in the eye much, have they? It'll be choice again, taking his spot. The vision. Waited for it to open, found the crease for four. The session finally gets to him. And this is what Oklahoma's about. They'll give you different personnel groups, different formation formations they'll motion the tight end they'll motion the pullback but they run they basically run uh, the combination the, the inside stretch or the inside zone the stretch zone Kevin Wilson run game coordinator offensive uh, co-offensive coordinator is responsible for, for this part of the package and Kevin does a nice job of mixing things up to get leverage by formation on the defense first down at the Tech 13 first series of the second half offensively for the Zooners it's a Flag here. I don't know. I guess they're going to call a little celebration action against Oklahoma. Penalty flag thrown out of bounds by the official. The difference in this game when Oklahoma gets in plus territory and close to the red zone, and that's on inside the red zone, they've gotten into the end zone. That's right. Touchdown instead of field goal. Three touchdowns. Texas Tech has had to settle for field goals. DiCarlo in for the point after. And there was an assessment, and it's going to be coming up on the kick as the Sooners were a little too demonstrative. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct on number 38 of the offense. The touchdown is good. It's a 15 yard penalty that will be enforced on the kickoff. Now, this is a guy that doesn't touch it much. He doesn't carry the ball. In fact, Runnels did not have a carry last year. He had 16 catches, though, and that's exactly what he does well for this team again this season, catching the ball. I'm with Bob Stoops. I didn't really see anything that was that glaring to draw the penalty. I don't know. I don't know if something was said. I didn't see anything that was demonstrative physically. DiCarlo gets the extra point. Number 
see over the nation now with some breathing room. It was a one score game. And it's all of a sudden a 15 point lead. So I guess with what we've seen from Texas Tech over the last couple of weeks, they've got them exactly where they want. 4.38 to play in the third quarter in Norman. After the score, excessive celebrating cost him 15 yards and Carlo has to kick off from his own 20 yard line. It's almost like kicking from a safety. Well, he's downwind. There's a slight breeze at his back as Amendola's over to the far side. Johnny Mack over to the near side waiting on him after the nine play. 60 wide scoring drive, taking almost five minutes off the clock. Now, does he go out of bounds? Yes. Did he touch it? No. <laughs> he shouldn't have. And they say he did. He did. He touched oh, it. Oh, what a mistake. Touched it. If he didn't, they'd have better yeah. field position. Oh. Great field position. It did. They took it dog leg mistake. right. What a mistake. You just make sure that it's going out of bounds. So a real error for Texas Tech. Now they have to the 20. Their last time settled for a field goal. Cumby maneuvering. Man on the side on Olamu with a tight end. Oh, if he waited for Cody Fuller to give him a block. He's brought down by Dante Nicholson. All he wanted to do was run over the guy. Well, and, and, he, and he broke a tackle by, I'll tell you what, I'm in there, get ya. Tried to make the hit on Olamua, and here he comes. Anya Nagetcha says, I don't think so. Catch, miss. Oop. And after catch, significant yards, 12 yards after the missed tackle by Anya Nagetcha. So 21 on the reception. First and 10 outside of their own 41. Shovel. And Anderson drop. Great penetration. It was third nine. He's been called a couple of times today. He's only a sophomore. 6'5, 255 defensive end. Plays hard. Can really run. Disruptive force. And a little little bit different wrinkle to the shovel pass. Fake the forward pass and then shovel pass with the left hand. No fool whatsoever. Inside of four in the county. Oklahoma has a lot of things working their way. The clock, the score, play fake on the delay. Cumbie, low throw, did it skip in there? Well, they give it to the wide receiver pull. They're going to say it was a catch. He sold it well. Yeah, he did. At the 48. He you did. be the judge on this replay. Did he get his hands underneath the football? And Bob Stoops and, and Bo Pelini can't believe that he did. As Cumbie delivers this ball, let's see if it if it short hops hits the ground or not. Does he get his hands up underneath it? Oh, that's that's that hit the ground. That bounced off the ground and, and up into his chest. You gotta go to the Big Ten for a replay, though. Let's call it. <laughs> From the 48. Third and makeable now. You got it, third and four. I thought the umpire was going to come in and say because he had a good look at it. He did. He did. Anderson. Beacon says it's all Henderson. What a job. Talk about a tough six yards. He, he ran <laughs> sideways to his left and then sideways to his right. And that's, I mean, he ran as fast laterally as he did going forward. So it's a first down by a couple of yards. Torian Henderson, the Big 12's Offensive Player of the Week. He won it for him last week with a career best on the ground. 169 yards. Had 17 carries last week. He's already got 14 this week. So Mike Leach is trying to get the running game incorporated and keep these defenses honest. Underneath, it's Olamua again. He's got the first down. Boy, it's tough. It is really tough to wrap a guy that size, especially for a guy that he he's got maybe seven eight inches on to begin with. Yeah, and once you get the old 18 wheeler rolling, he's gonna he's gonna make the play. There he is, just hooking up, missed tackle. Make somebody miss. And that's a linebacker who's making miss. Another missed tackle. And you know, you had you had Dante Nicholson, who's a good football player. Lance Mitchell, a good football player. He made a miss, and then he made him, he broke tackles. Olamu is a force. Cumby, number one passer in the nation, 440 a game. You saw. 180 behind that total right now. A little less than 180. And he just got it off, even though he fumbles it away on the play. 
The cross for Hicks almost spun away for extra yards, but Rufus Alexander wrapped him up at the 30 after his short game. First down line brought to you this afternoon by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% every day. It's all about the O at Overstock.com. Once again, Texas Tech is moving the football in chunks, but they started from their own 20. It takes a long time, doesn't it? Takes a long time again, and, and Oklahoma is trying to keep things in front of them. And for the most part, they have. They missed some tackles with Olamula, but they, they, very rarely they get beaten over the top. They make you go on multiple play drives. It, it increases your chance for making a mistake. Second and eight, it's batted down. They wanted to go to Hicks on a deep slant. They read the quarterback perfectly. Man, it looked like Magruder got there. Transfer from Tennessee. Magruder lost his lid. He'll put that helmet back on. Head back downstairs. Jim Knox. Okay, I want to remind the college football fans they can email us today's game. The keyword ask Knox. It's foxsports.com on MSN. Keyword. Keyword. What is it? Oh, no. I am stunned, guys. Ask Knox. So email us. We'll answer some emails here in the second half, guys. Well, Jim's really hanging around the right people, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Always is. Huge third down for Tech. Trailing by 15. Cumby. Pocket holds up, gets the first down inside the 20 as Fuller took a shot. Boy, he gave his body a pull on the coverage. Well, Cumbie makes all the throws necessary in the spread offense. He makes the slant throw well. He throws the verticals well. He, he has got a very, very accurate throwing arm. And he threaded the needle there between three defenders in the vicinity. And this is a courageous route because you know you're going to get lit up. And he did. I mean, right in the middle of the back, take the hit. To hold on to the football. It's a good job by Cody Fuller. Another time consuming drive, though, for Texas Tech, and now they can't afford going into the fourth quarter any more field goals. They've got to get into the end zone. Fake one way, screen it the other way, and Glover gets very little. And he takes it down inside the 16. Shelby chopped him down. I like the concept of the design. Fake screen one way, hit it quickly left. And this is where Oklahoma's defense in the red zone becomes such a factor. We saw it in the last play. A, li a little dump pass, and, and the, the receivers at the five-yard line, Oklahoma's defenders are all in the end zone, and, and they make the tackle. Oklahoma's, when the field is compressed, Oklahoma's defense becomes a bigger factor. The holes close so much quicker. Final seconds. Will they get it off in time? On second and seven. Yes. Anderson wishes they didn't, though. Only a yard down to the 15. So now a third and six on the first snap of the fourth quarter. Four down territory. Four down, Four down territory, territory sure. all the way for Cumby and the Red Raiders. So after three, Oklahoma leads by a couple of scores. They're on top 21 to 6, and you're watching College Football Saturday. It's all presented by Kia Zero on FSN. the ground is a factor white two touchdown passes broke Heupel's record and tech on 29 receptions 130 yards after catch less than five yards yak after catch nice tackling by Oklahoma biggest third down of the game though for Cumbie and the Red Raiders Cumbie has a lane to throw through and throws it way behind Fuller on the near side and he was hit as he was delivering that football by Rufus Alexander got some pressure and again defensive coaches for Oklahoma Doing a nice job of mixing things up. Brent Venables, Bo Pliny. Sometimes a three-man front, sometimes a four-man front. Sometimes bringing five in pressure, sometimes six by bringing linebackers. Bringing cornerbacks off the weak side, the back side of the quarterback. Changing the looks up, trying to keep Cumby uncomfortable. They've done a pretty good job of it so far. Now, this is nothing new for Texas Tech. They go for it on fourth regularly. And this is their fifth game of the year. Four and six. Here comes the blitz, and it's deflected at the line. Oklahoma holds. Verdine. Verdine got it up in time. Read the quarterback perfectly. So ten seconds into the fourth, the Sooners take over on downs. This is just a great hustle, great determination by a down lineman to get in the quarterback's passing lane. Verdine separates. And the blocking scheme there is questionable. You leave Burdine on the quarterback's backside by his lonesome. 
You know, the, the, the blitz made everybody block down and slide away from Bernine. Bernine almost comes in untouched. Loper gets one hand on him only. Bernine closes. Once again, you see Oklahoma's defensive speed. The closing speed of Bernine was a factor in that play. Peterson's going to be the single. As they slide Runnels in motion. And Loper there's play. a busted play. Yep. Peterson went the wrong way. When Jason White turned around, when Jason White turned around, his, his young running back was nowhere to be found. They're talking about it right now. That was just uh, aborted from word go. And, he, and you have to give that last snap on that fourth down play again. Brent Venables, Bo Pelini, and the defensive staff, you have to give them a star on their forehead. They broke down Texas Tech's protection and found a way to pressure the quarterback. So a loss of two, it'll be second and a dozen. Back at the 13. Peterson, only two. You're right about that. You, you were talking about what he could do in high school. It's early in his college career. He'll find out it's a little quicker up here. Hi, I'm Halle Berry. And as a new mom, I can tell you that... Far side, it's complete for Wilson. He's got a first down. Big hit by Chad Johnson at the conclusion of it, but another great throw by Jason White. That is long from this near side and all the way to the far side boundary. Yeah, you're right. He's uh, he's basically he's hugging pretty much the middle of the field, but he throws it accurately over corner in front of safety. Safety blows him up after catch, but boy, that's in. He's thrown to a nice spot there. And coming in, coming into the football game, third and six or longer. Jason White was 15 of 18 for 306 yards. That's ridiculous. Over 83% completions. First down. So they convert on third and nine. Oklahoma is now 7 of 11. Choice into the backfield. Scrambles across the 40 after the 43-yard line. Going down. He's hit low by Vincent Meeks. Now back to the injury for Adrian Peterson. It looked like maybe a little hyperextended knee. Right, as he's struggling for additional yards. He gets hit. And as he's trying to drag the defender, left ankle, left knee, contorted, put in bad spots, and then the pile falls on top of him. Just strained it a little bit, but he's a young guy with, uh, with a lot of flexibility, so he does a pretty good job, even though Mike Smith kind of twists that leg up a little bit. Oklahoma just wants to chew up the clock now. Joyce chews up about three yards, gets a first down across the 46. I don't think it'll be 90 seconds, three more snaps. Downstairs, we go for an update on Peterson. Jim Knox. Joe, looks like Adrian Peterson's going to be all right right now. He's just walking gingerly on the sidelines. What he's doing, he's telling the players exactly right. He planted, and then he took a shot on the knee. Everybody, a big sigh of relief as he got up and came to the sidelines. It looked like he will be fine, guys. All right, Knox, he's averaging seven yards a carry. He was averaging like six and a half coming in. He's productive. At 183 last week, 140 so far today. First true freshman to ever start his Oklahoma career with four consecutive 100 plus yard games and they've had a few backs here just a few yeah Joyce running on first down for very little yard and a half two at the most How about uh, Owens and Sims a couple of Heisman Trophy winners uh, for running backs I mean they have had yeah more than their share Greg Pruitt great back played with the Cleveland Browns for a lot of years in the and you know what I really like about, and we talked about coming here, and it's great football territory, but snap by snap, these are real good football fans. They yep. read the game, the situation, they're into it. Yeah, no, no question about it, Joe. Second and eight, ball shy of the 49. White with protection, the snap is there. Brandon Jones cutting in his way inside the four. Down to the 37 as a first down. We talked about it earlier. Depth at running back, depth at wide receiver. And they've got multiple people that can can run past you, and make big big plays, and that's just an excellent timing route and, and touch of a throw by Jason White. Mike Goldberg was giving us updates earlier, and Virginia Tech is still trying to pull off the upset of the day. They're up 19-6 early in the fourth at home against West Virginia, the number seven team of the nation. From the 37 to first down. And Jason White wants to throw the football. Good play. It's complete for Wilson. Jones ran through that area and took one of the safeties down to the middle of the field. Right. That was a great route. It was, and, and not, not quick enough recognition by Texas Tech. 
because two guys jumped on one receiver clearing the uh, clearing the area out. Let's take a look at what Jason White sees. Little half roll, little throwback pass, and it is wide open. Wide open. Travis Wilson, uh, the beneficiary of nice scheme. And Nazir Udine, he bit right. on the move by the other wide receiver. Right. And, and here's the clear out that we're talking about right here. And, and Travis Wilson just runs a little, little crossing pattern underneath for big yards. Joyce trying to bounce outside. Barely pulled down out on the edge. Tough tackle. Got a good one. Nazir Udine. On the solo stop. At the nine. First down line brought to you this afternoon by Overstock.com. For name brand products, clearance prices, it's all about the O at Overstock.com. Joel Myers, Dave Latin, Jim Knox. Great football country, Big 12 country in Norman, Oklahoma. To treat when we get here. I don't think we were here last year. We were here two years ago, right. a couple of times. I don't think they want to see us. Bob Stoops, 33 and 1 at home, and we did the only loss at home yeah, for Oklahoma Bob Stoops. Yeah. Or Sean Woods, late in the game. He did that to a few teams, though. <laughs> White in trouble. And throws it over his wide open tight end, Bubba Moses. Deke Bake was the difference in the play. He was. Deke Bake should get a pass defense right here because Deke Bake made Jason White throw the ball sooner than he wanted to because he knew Travis Wilson was breaking free. But he had to try to get away from Bake as he was trying to hit a wide open tight end, it was, in the back of the end zone. That's Big James Moses. They Bubba Moses. Bubba. I think we've seen enough Bubba's on the road that we've been at Planet Bubba. <laughs> Inside the 10, in his third and eight. Pocket holds up, here's a late oh. blitz, and White over the middle, touchdown Oklahoma, Wilson. That's just a great individual effort right there by White. Chad Johnson thought he was going to get him down. And he did. Mike Smith was uh, was there in the vicinity as well. Flag goes down. It was on Tech, though. That will be declined. Tech lined up offsides. Just a very athletic play. Now, we talked about Jason White having his legs back underneath him. Here's a good example of it. Blitz. Chad Johnson misses. Mike Smith pops him. The ball's already gone. Last year, Jason White would not have been able to get out of the way of that play like he did. He's got those legs without the knee braces now. His legs are back underneath him, and it's easier to throw it. DiCarlo pushed it and got it inside the upright. So a perfect day so far for Oklahoma. Two for two on the possession for the second half, and White, he talked about it, showed his mobility he didn't have when he was wearing the brace. He paid for it at the end of the play. It wasn't artistic, but it worked. Heisman then finished second in the voting next season. Good question. Very good question. Billy Glad Simpson, you feel that way. What a, what, a, what a sad, sad deal for Billy Simpson's injury. His, his knee injury cuts that promising career short. He ran well when he was healthy for the Lions. Oh, yeah, he sure did. 28 and 6. Sooners, eight yard touchdown pass to runners. Now another yard with Travis Wilson. As DiCarlo's bumped up, and Johnny Mack, the running back, stays in the end. Four and a half minutes gone. Tech needs a quick score. And pluralize that. As Cumbie on the little shallow cross gets it to Glover. Perkins forces him out. It's a first down, though. It's outside the 35. Let's see where they put it. Right past the 35, near the 36. And go to the sideline as well when you can. Now the, the clock's a huge enemy. It sure is, and, and this is the bread and butter. This is where Texas take, Tech makes their money. Crossing pattern. They read man, they continue to run. They read zone, they settle down in an open spot of the zone. They do it better than anybody in the country. Here comes a delayed blitz. They get a chip. Underneath it goes. It's Haverty. And down the sideline, look out. They say he stepped out at the 49. It'll be a first down anyway. Yeah, Bassey almost missed with the angle. He got there just enough to get Haverty to step on the on the sideline. And throw back pass. Haverty's off. Here comes here comes Bass. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, doesn't have the best angle, but just gets a piece of him. Right foot out. Left foot out. Right foot out. Left foot out again. He's definitely out. 
So they put her to the midfield strike. Well, first down for Texas Tech, 30 yards on a pass to Glover and a second to Haverty. One thing Oklahoma has done very well today is kept everything in front of them. Yep. That almost got behind them. Cumbie has it batted down again. You know, we saw that regularly, and they read Cumbie well. I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen it more often. If you don't get the penetration, go off. Even though Cumbie's a big guy at 6'4". Yeah, and, and I, the, the guy that is giving Oklahoma the most trouble in terms of not keeping him in front of them is Haverty. They, they broke coverage on him down the sideline where he almost, almost scored. But Oklahoma has been... A keen example, once again, Joel, of bend but don't break. You know, they give up yards between the 20s. It's like a trap meet between the 20s. Once you get in the red zone, they tighten it up. And then expect your opponent to make mistakes, because Oklahoma can force mistakes. He's thrown behind the young man you're talking about, Haverty, on that one. And, and that's, again, in my opinion, when you have team speed defensively, it is tougher to score in the red zone. And I think you have to be able to run the ball at him in the red zone. You have to pound them in the red zone if they're athletic and fast and maybe not the biggest people in the world and, and Texas Tech style of offense is a good matchup for Oklahoma in the red zone with all the speed they have closing those windows of opportunity up so quickly when the field's compressed. And now third and ten for the ball at the 50. Pressure. And oh! The deflected intercept. The kick off is poor. Down the sideline barely tripped up going down inside the 30. So after it went off the hand of the wide receiver, Bull was there, the safety. There was double coverage on that one. And same type of scenario that happened last week in Kansas. Deflected balls and, and off those deflections, the old tip drill, the defense staying with it. And uh, it, not quite on the same page in terms of he was starting to settle down into his, his seam of the zone. Cumbie still leading him. Hicks deflects it to pull. Poole not only intercepts the ball, but more hidden yards. Returns the ball about 30 yards. Hidden yards giving Oklahoma a short field. Texas Tech with their backs to the wall defensively. And good news for Sooner fans, Dave. Adrian Peterson is back in there at tailback. On first down. Looks for the kick out. Man took a shot low again. Right on the left side. On the left side, he went downward. He gets about three. Jeremy Woods over there, the senior from Andrews, Texas. So 183 yards last week, career best in only his third game. He got the start today, his first career start, due to the ankle injury to Kewan Jones, and he's made the most of it, almost seven per carry. Yeah, he's uh, he's very effective. I mean, he can. He's got uh, the ability, the size, and the, and the and the power to run inside, and the and the speed to to bounce it to the outside. I think he's got to get just a little bit more discipline, not try to make every run a home run. His attempt, he can't try to score every time, which he did in high school. Runnels sets up. Now, can Runnels give him a block? Peterson waits for the pursuit to go by. Gets a couple inside the 20. Now to the 19. So he'll bring up third a little more than four. And our first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Name brand products at clearance prices. It is all about the O. Overstock.com. Peterson's a very upright runner, Joel. Reminds me of an Eric Dickerson type guy. That his carriage on the football field is is uh, is very upright. And that may be he may be a little susceptible to, to taking some shots in the old ribs, but he's got functional football speed. They, you know, Bob Stoops said with his shoulder pads and helmet on, he's just as fast, if not faster. He's so strong. 8 of 12 on the third down, 67% coming in. White, will he run for it? No. Man, it's off the fingertips of Wilson. He should have run for it. He could have had it. He only needed a little more than four. DiCarlo came into the game three for four with a long of 35. This is his first attempt of the day. And uh, the snapper, Jacob Rice, uh, didn't know they were going to kick a uh, field goal. He came running on late. Hard to kick a field goal without that snapper. From 36 yards away, it's on its way, and he's pushed it. Not even close. So life is still there, even though it's a slim shot. With 8-10 to play, but a missed 36-yard attempt. We we're just talking about the magical year, 1978, for Billy Sims, a Heisman season. With our Dr. Pepper trivia, can you name the two players that came back after winning and finished second in the voting for the next season? One of them was Billy Sims. All right. The next year, and, and Mr. Inside, Mr. Outside, Doc Blanchard, Glenn Davis, and Army. 
Uh, he, Doc won it in, in, in one year and then gave it to his teammate, Len Davis, uh, the next year and finished right behind him. How about that? Same backfield, one and two in the high speed mode. Gumby with a path to throw. Haverty had to go and lunge to get it. He's right on the marker. He's got the first down. So Texas Tech has more total yardage, 345 yards compared to 329 before that snap. But the turnovers and the lack of scoring in the red zone has hurt Texas Tech once again today. They just had to work too long a field to get their points. Time for Cumby. Man, Glover adjusts nicely. He's got the first down. Knocked out of bounds just shy of the 45 by Perkins. When you're your average drive start is 20 yards worse than your opponent like it was for Texas Tech at the half. Your average drive start at their own 16-yard line. Oklahoma's at 36. That's huge. And this is a typical Texas Tech scenario. Spread you out and make you make plays in space. Perkins makes the hit, but he's not there soon enough to give tight enough cover. Good day to be at the ballpark. That young man's enjoyed it. He's oblivious to the score, but he loves the game. Henderson maneuvering nicely. Almost got another first down. I think he's got it right at the 45. Rodney pulled the free safety. And now we're not getting into it again. Yeah. Henderson's got that fast twitch, you know? His muscle. You either have you have a fast twitch, you're a sprinter, you're a speed guy. He's got that fast twitch. I mean, he can make he can make multiple moves in a very, very short, compact spot. I mean, he'd be tough to tag in a phone booth in a game of this. A game of tag and, and make him in. Look at look at him. He makes the moves. He's, you know, he's so, so quick and he's got that low center of gravity. Doesn't give you a whole lot of hitting surface. It's like tackling a pectoral and a quad. You know, he doesn't give you much to, to hit and wrap around. So they'll start the clock, get it moving, and here comes Texas Tech again in plus territory. And seven and a half minutes, just about time of possession advantage for Tech, which is a shock. Yeah, you would not expect that to be the case. Again, hidden yards killed him. Lover on the fake. Ooh. And again, time draws. It's batted down by the linebacker Mitchell. So we saw that regularly. And Kansas did it well last yep, week. They did. And, they didn't get to the quarterback, but they timed his throw. They did. And the key is against Texas Tech to make sure that all the passing lanes are blocked with bodies. And Mitchell does a good job. I mean, that, that hit him right in the chin. If he didn't have a face mask on, he breaks his chin. <laughs> but Mitchell gets in the throwing lane and gets airborne. If you're not going to sack the quarterback, get your hands up and try to deflect it. The Cubs had a lot of balls deflected the last couple of weeks. You're right, Joe. Lance Mitchell out of San Francisco. A nice play. Going for Hicks on the far side. Too tall, even for Jerry. Bassey on the coverage. That'll stop it with 7.02 left. So a 22 point advantage for the number two team of the nation cruising right along as we head back to the sideline. Jim Knox. Joel, going to answer a quick email right now. Beth Wright from Oklahoma wanted to say, hey, my son, Dustin, is a Sooner man. That's something new here in Oklahoma this year. Can you find him? You're Dustin, right? What's Sooner man all about? We got the caves, we got the shirt. Good to not kidding, he's not with Steve You next, baby. I think they're ready for UT next week, guys. Oh, Knox, he makes a mama proud right there. Makes him come up. Bevo taking shots at Bevo along the way. Boy, oh, boy. Glover make it Johnny Mack instead. Inside the 45 to the 44 on third and 10. See what all that tuition does? You become a super sooner. That tuition's well spent. <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about the North earlier with Missouri and Colorado. How about Texas and Oklahoma in the South? Well, this is the Big 12 opener. Oklahoma's cruising right now, 44-7, midway through the third. So, or Texas. Texas, rather, they're over Baylor right now easy. So, they'll both be 1-0 in the Red River Battle next week. And, and that Red River Battle, so early in the season, determines probably the South, Big 12 South champ, opportunity for the Big 12 championship and national championship. You either get it or you don't. Over the middle, first down inside the 30 Hicks as they sold out a little bit. Left man coverage in the secondary. Vassy pulled him down from behind. By the way, that is one of the great days in sports. Oh, yeah, Texas, Oklahoma just walking around the cotton bowl of the State Fair. I, I agree with oh. you. It's, it's spectacular. Pump fake right, throw left. Gumby hits Hicks. Hicks, 6'4", 210. Mass Bassey is, is a big corner, 6'1", 197. But Hicks dwarfs him. I mean, Hicks has got that size-speed ratio 
That's tough to cover. And Hicks is only a softer. Yep. I mean, he's got the potential to be with Sean Woods down the road. Anderson making the most of the opportunity again, scrambling his way to the 21-yard line. Shelby finally caught up with him. Well, they're getting on the cusp of the red zone once again, and the red zone has been the twilight zone for Texas Tech. They've not been able to get it figured out. This is where Oklahoma's defense, and we talked about it before, the team speed becomes more of an issue. You can't stretch them as much vertically anymore. You can spread them out horizontally, but they recover so quickly because of that speed. Second and short. Come be in trouble. He's got a first down. It ticks again. I check that. First catch of the day for Amendola. Their punt return man slipped in on the field. So it's down inside the 10 to the eighth, first and goal. And once again, it's the crossing route. Amendola doing a good job finding a little zone area, settling down in there. And Mack is in there, not Henderson in the backfield. Gumby calling it at the line. It's Johnny Mack. Huge hole up the middle. Touchdown, Texas Tech. Gumby saw something to take advantage of up the gut. And did they ever? The Red Sea parted there. Mack scores in the old touch football game. Did anybody lay a fingernail on him? And, and, and ch check it out. It's the old fold block. Center guard fold. And, and Mack is virtually untouched as he takes it to the end zone. The interest in they're only going for one here. Well, if they go for two, they're two, two touchdowns down. They're still, you know, with the two-point conversion, I guess Mike Leach thinks it's still a two-score game. Jay Lincoln for the point after. It's good. And with 4.50 to play, Texas Tech. Will they go onside this early? We'll find out. Trails, 28-13. Almost untouched into the end zone. First touchdown of the day, though. Eight-yard run. Nice little uh, nice little scheme. Let's take a look at it. Center blocks back. Guard folds. Gets a little kick out on Lance Mitchell. And there it is. Johnny Mack untouched, basically, till the three-yard line. You're not going to be able to arm tackle him from there. So, little uh, crisscross action now, in the pits. Down by 15. The onside kick. And it's covered early by Oklahoma's Travis Wilson. So the Sooners have it in tech territory. We return to Norman. www.wendyshighschoolheisman.com today. Nominate, nominate your Heisman hopeful of tomorrow. Nominees are going to be announced October 4th. As we get ready for the final 450 from the 44. Choice is the call. He's got four down to the 40. A record setting day for Jason White. Now the all time career passing leader. Touchdown tosses for three this afternoon. Giving him 55 in his career. This is a beautifully thrown ball right there. Just uh, excellent. Nice scheme underneath. Hits the big fullback for the, for the record setter. Little uh, icing on the on the cake right there to Travis Wilson after showing some elusiveness, his capability in the pocket that he couldn't perform physically last year. He was a sitting duck because of that uh, those knee problems. He's got a second and six at the 40 of Tech. Just want to run the clock. Choice close to a first down. Shy by about a yard and a half. Brent Slaughter got to him. Chris usually makes the right choice. And he, he does make good decisions running the football. He's got good vision as well. They are loaded at running back. And quarterback. No, no doubt. Unbelievable. And wide receiver. Bob Stoops, uh, this program is built to last. And uh, they're on a roll. When you, when you look at some of the, it's a premier program. In, in, in five years, three division titles, two conference championships, and a national championship, that dog will hunt for anybody. Number two team of the nation on their way to a win again over Texas Tech. So they can run out the clock now with 3.38 as they move the chain, stopping momentarily as Tech just used a timeout. They've got two left. Oklahoma should finish the game with all three of theirs on the board. Oklahoma wanted to be balanced. They've rushed now for 191 yards, thrown the ball for 151. 
pretty close to that balance that they were looking for. 342 yards to Texas Tech's 425, 369 in the air. And way below their season numbers, but it's just whatever it takes for Oklahoma. Let's face it. Choice sliding outside down to the 26. Coming into the game, Oklahoma's averaged 253 yards a game passing, 249 on the ground. I mean, right. that's the ultimate for an offensive coordinator. Yeah, you look for balance and what an example. First down line brought to you by Overstock.com, your online outlet. It is all about the O, Overstock.com. Well, we had perfection today. I mean, game time temperature right around 60 degrees. Perfect fall football weather in the Big 12. Great game coming up in a few minutes. Missouri, Colorado. Tells us a lot about the Big 12 North. Then next Saturday, Red River Shootout. Choice again, weaving his way up the middle. Down to the 23. It'll be third and short. And let's see if Tech uses a timeout here. And they will. We'll do the same. Texas Tech uses their second of the second half with 221 to play. See if the Sooners can run out the clock, convert on third and short. Touchdown toss. And this, uh, in, in the corner of the end zone, just a, a beautifully thrown football. Tremendous accuracy. And then he threw underneath to J.D. Runnels that broke the record. And he followed up with uh, another touchdown toss to Wilson. It's third and a couple. It'll be Choice angling it. He's got the first down down to the 20 yard line. So they can effectively run out the clock now with 2.16 to play. And Dave, you are you are a fanatic for the hidden yards. Yes. Well, the hidden yards today, Oklahoma's average drive start their own 36. And right. that's twice as good as Tex. They started back at their own 18 on average. And this, uh, we, we mentioned how this built to last. After this snap, I want to talk about a couple of guys that were instrumental in this thing being built to last. First down, just shy of the 20. Inside of two to play, and White throwing again. And off the fingertips of his tight end, Moses. That's a surprise. Got our FoxSports.com on MSN. Question. What about the best game of the day? Well, the predictions. Would it be White? Cumbie. Well, White's had a very efficient day, even though Cumbie's thrown for more yards. White, a higher percentage overall in the three touchdown tosses. Aaron Rodgers, Derek Anderson. The other two we asked about the second half. Joel, right here, right there. That gentleman, Jerry Schmidt, is the strength and conditioning coach here at Oklahoma. Big, big factor in their success. And he's won national championships at Notre Dame, Florida, and Oklahoma. He knows what he's doing. Joyce cutting it back. Ken Scott underneath tackle on the stop. Gain of about two. Man, I believe tackle use their final timeout. They will. And, 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 you know, you recruit great athletes, but developing them is a key. And, and Jerry Schmidt has developed them in the strength and conditioning program. And the guy that's responsible for recruiting him right there, Bobby Jack Wright, special teams coach, recruiting coordinator. He finds the talent. He was great. Bob Stoops is first hired because he knew Texas so well. He finds the players. Jerry Schmidt helps develop them. Big, big reason for Oklahoma's success. So the final timeout taken by Texas Tech. And we were talking about Barry Switzer earlier. He thinks Peterson could be the best back ever. But let's move ahead a week down the road. Get his ideas. Barry Switzer on Texas-Oklahoma game. Well, I tell you what, I've been on both sides of this. You know, I've, we've won five in a row. We've, I've lost three in a row. I know the pressure that builds. I know the pressure builds to the other side. The, you know, so I've, I've been where Max has been. Uh, uh, Bob's never experienced that. And, um, and uh, I think that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it, there is tremendous pressure involved. Uh, we know that. There's no need to deny that. Uh, it's important to win this football game. It's important for all the reasons. I mean, we can list dozens. But uh, it, it's something I, I, I approach it every year. You know, all the touchdowns, all the big plays that were made last year, all those points scored last year, that's 63. They don't, they don't help you a thing in 64. They don't do it one way. You might psychologically think, hey, we did that last year. you got to go prove it every year. you got to prove it every play. And that's the difference. And uh, there's not much difference in talent. And uh, But... Uh, I think it's, uh, it's going to be interesting, and I'm hopefully I'm, I'm, if I can get a ticket, I'll be there to watch it. 
Yeah, very Swisser, and I like what he said, that he's been on both sides of yep. it. He said, I've been where Mac's been, and it's tough for Mac Brown. His choice almost got the first down. He's shy by about a yard. Hit yeah. by Slay, and he said Bob has never experienced that yet. And, and Bob, this gentleman right there, Bob Stoops, might be the best big game coach in college football. He just has that swagger, you know, it's like, he, he knows Texas is good. He's, and he'll tell his players, look, Texas is good. They're, they're, they're talented, but if we play our game, we're good too, and we can beat them. And, and that permeates to his players. They expect to win the game. They don't go in hoping to win it. They expect to win the game. And I know that Auburn, Alabama is a very emotional one in the SEC for that part of the country. As we look at the next one with Texas and then K-State coming up well, on the road for that's Oklahoma. Tough. That's tough. But, and Oklahoma's going to talk about this fourth and a yard they've got inside the 11. But I've experienced it a couple of times. And I know that Nebraska, Oklahoma in the Big 12 is great. And it's got a great deal of tradition. Look at, look at the beginning of the month, Texas, the Red River. And then the end of the month, you have the, the uh, battle right, in the state with Oklahoma where State. Last Miles has had a little success. Oh, absolutely. And in, in four weeks, you've got two huge, huge rivalries for recruiting purposes and everything else. Well, and I was going to get to the point that as we look at Texas Tech's upcoming schedule, they get some, well, they get to go home finally right. for the first five of the road. So even though it's Nebraska and Texas, at least they're at home. And they've got a great situation now with that, the way they revitalize that whole facility in Lubbock. But I've experienced Texas, Oklahoma at the Cotton Bowl, right. the State Fair. Yep. There's something so special about it. Is. It is. It is. I mean, it is just an experience. If you haven't done it, go sometime. I uh, had the privilege of, of covering uh, Ricky Williams breaking Dope Walker's. So they just want a yard. And they want to get out of here healthy, which they have for the most part. As the Oklahoma Sooners are up by 15 in the final minute. It'll be choice. He's got the yard. Now they can take it. It's over. It was over anyway. But now they can just take a couple of snaps, and it's official. So the bye, as Bob Stoops told us, he said it came at a real good time. They were a little nicked up. Right. It, they reassessed some of the areas they wanted to work on. Right. Found out they were even deeper than they thought going into the season. What you do during a bye week, Joel, is you self-scout. You find out what worked, what didn't, get right. rid of the stuff that didn't work. Do some of the stuff that did out of different formations and, and break tendencies, and they got all that done. So much for taking a knee. Out on the edge, choice, and he's going to get there now. Down to the one. And let's see if that's the last chance they'll have at the end zone. I, I can't believe that he was going to run it anyway on his former offensive coordinator. You know, I think I think Mike's though. Mike's <laughs> mentality is, you know what? We got to stop you. And, and Mike. Uh, yeah, he caught some heat for throwing the ball in the end zone against SMU uh, at the end of the opener. And Bob Stoops, <laughs> he's cheering him on. That's but he's it. saying that's it. He's no mosque. Go over, shake Mike Leach's hand, and, and get ready for Texas. But it's all over in Norman, Oklahoma. Two old friends. Comrades. A lot of respect. They, they said it. Went to battle together. You know, the first thing Bob Stoops did when he got the job at Oklahoma, bring in Leach to be a coordinator. All right, let's head down. Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joe. Coach, you got to be extremely pleased holding a well high powered offense at Texas Tech to just 13 points. You guys finally got three picks today, too, the first of the season. Yeah, fortunately, um, you know, sometimes they just come to you. But uh, yeah, we still can be a lot better. It's, it's frustrating 13 points, but uh, I recognize they, they, they score a lot of points on everybody. So I'm pleased, but uh, we, we got a lot we, we can still uh, polish up. Talk about Jason White. It becomes the Sooners all time passing touchdown passing leader three touchdowns today. That's 55 on his career here. He's special. The guy's uh, just amazing the way he leads our team and and the way he plays his humble nature and he's a great competitor and uh, you know he's so efficient and and not giving you bad plays and giving you great third down pickups. He's uh, he's really uh, he's something to watch. Adrian Peterson gets his first start. It looked like he got nicked up a little bit in and out, but it looked like he did fine, well over 100 yards. Uh, he did, was very solid, uh, made some big plays again for us, and it was pleased to see Tashard Choice come in and compliment him in the second half and, and run strong as well. So it's, uh, we, we've got some, some guys, and we're running the ball a little better. Okay, final question. Now you guys can finally talk about Texas. Next week, your thoughts. <laughs> Can't get here soon enough. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> uh, well, 
like it. Oh, I, I actually, baby. I love it. Can't get here soon enough. Well, they go in with a speed defense that's very impressive. It's going to be interesting to see Cedric Benson, Texas's philosophy of pounding that football, run that football. Will Oklahoma be able to stand up to it between the tackles? So the Red River battle is up next. Oh, Texas, it's going to be big. Oklahoma. And don't forget our college football Saturday doubleheader continues. Coming up next, number 10, Cal. The Golden Bears taking on the Beavers in Corvallis. This is Joel Myers from Dave Lappin, Jim Knox. Thanks for being with us, Dave. I'll look it back. I love coming to Norman, Oklahoma. It, there's it not is. a better venue in the country. Final score again. Oklahoma, the number two team in the nation, impressively maintains control throughout and wins by 15. Now back to the studio, Mike Goldberg, Kevin Winslow, Billy Ray Smith. Guys, 